naturally it's biased. It's not, uh, uh, we're not saying that the, those are the most interesting papers. All of the other papers are, many of the other papers are equally interesting, but you know, we only have so much time. So uh, that's us. I'll start um, with a, a bit of an introduction. Uh, then uh, we will take you through what we think are, are really uh, important challenges, uh, also inspiring challenges, challenges where especially uh, if you're um, a more junior researcher, you might want to take a look at, you might be inspired to find uh, great topics to work on. After these challenges, we'll, we'll take a step back uh, and, and you know, help you, if, if you want to work in this space, help you um, focus on some future directions. Right, so uh, that's uh, the first 20 to 25 minutes, what you see expanded here. Um, I'll, we'll start from uh, uh, quite a bit of um, uh, an abstract uh, formulation, then we'll take, make it more and more concrete. Uh, we'll do a, a quick uh, look at what's ahead with these five important challenges and then we'll jump into the five challenges one by one. Uh, probably each challenge takes about 20 minutes or so. Um, so uh, Wen Chang and uh, uh, Chung Min are online. Uh, everything should work. At some point we'll switch over uh, and I'll give the screen to uh, Wen Chang and then to Chung Min. Um, let's see how that works. This is my first hybrid tutorial. Um, all right, so a bit of background. As I said, we'll start, we'll start fairly um, abstractly. And um, we'll, we'll position ourselves somewhere in the middle between search and recommendation. So uh, this is nothing new here. Uh, it's an old story. It's a story that has motivated the research that we've been doing as a community for, for well, decades, um, right? We have uh, large volumes of information, large volumes uh, of options, uh, and we, uh, we have to take decisions, we need to choose options, and we need to technology to help us with these decisions and making those choices. Um, we know the search paradigm where we have a very explicit uh, statement of a person's information need. Um, we know the recommendation paradigm where it may be a lot more implicit. And as you'll see in a couple of minutes with the conversational recommender systems, we're sort of in the middle. Um, we're acting on our implicit understanding of uh, a user's needs, uh, but we're occasionally soliciting um, some further information where we might occasionally be ex actually asking them to explicitly state their information need. And so um, on one of the next slides, you'll, you'll see us take that position right in the middle. Um, for this tutorial though, we'll focus, we'll fly into this from the right hand side, from the recommendation side, not so much from the search side. And so this is probably familiar to, to most of you. Uh, I guess most of you have been even if you're a junior PhD student, um, most of you have been uh, looking at the recommender systems for a while. Um, at, we're tr trying to predict uh, a user's preference. We're trying to understand what next action on our part could um, uh, help satisfy a user's need. Uh, and uh, we, we, our understanding is mostly based on past behavior of the user. Uh, it could be click history, could be uh, ratings, um, it could be uh, maybe some explicit profile information that they gave. Uh, however, it's often implicit and we'll have to work uh, with this. Implicit means we're not completely sure. Uh, we have signals that we can interpret in many ways, but the same signal might sometimes be uh, have a positive interpretation, but for, uh, on other occasions, a negative one. Um, and there's a lot of noise in those signals. Um, a lot of noise in clicks, a lot of noise in ratings, uh, even 
and, and there's also a, quite a bit of um, uh, dynamics uh, in these uh, signals. What might be appropriate today might no longer be uh, uh, appropriate as a response on the system side uh, tomorrow. And so one interesting uh, or two interesting uh, key problems to keep in mind uh, that motivate uh, conversational recommenders uh, are these two. So uh, one is uh, what we call information asymmetry. Um, so a system can only estimate a user's preferences based on uh, their historical data. Uh, and the other is this intrinsic limitation that I just mentioned or hinted at. Uh, preferences drift over time. Um, and not only that, it may also be hard to understand why um, uh, a person has a, a certain preference at, at one time and another preference at another time. The, the perspective of, of a recommender system uh, on the context of a user may be very limited. We don't know what they're trying to achieve in many cases. We don't know what the task is that they have. We don't know what goals they've set themselves. We had a bit of an issue with the AV starting up, so I'm, this is a lap. This is not my laptop, uh, so I don't see the time. I'll have to use the phone for that, uh, which is fine. Uh, that's why we have multiple devices. Um, right uh, now, this. Uh, Asymmetry is something that uh, conversational systems address directly or can address directly, but also uh, this, this, se this second part uh, of the intrinsic uh, limitation here is something that uh, conversational systems could address directly, um, find out why uh, someone is interested or not interested in a certain option uh, that we might want to offer. And so, uh, in the survey that I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, uh, we define a conversational recommender system as follows. It's a system that can elicit the dynamic preferences, so not just the preferences, but also the, the, the changing preferences of users, and take actions based on um, their current needs, their needs at that point in time when we ask about those preferences uh, through real-time multi-turn interactions. And so, the interactions can take many shapes. Uh, they could be spoken, they could be written, they could be uh, just clicks on, on a certain menu of options. Um, we don't constrain this to any particular type of interaction. Uh, we're just looking for any signals that might help us break uh, the information asymmetry. Here are two screen dumps. Um, uh, a conversational system in the dialogue setting uh, on your left-hand side, um, right, we have a, uh, a canonical back and forth, uh, uh, someone arriving with a very generic uh, wish, uh, then the, the system try to drill down, uh, offering some, some options, uh, uh, trying to make it uh, more precise, and, and finally we have a, a very concrete a suggestion of, of a song to play um, towards the end of this interaction. On the right-hand side, we have uh, something conversational, uh, but in a different way. It's not speech that we're exchanging. It's not text that we're exchanging. We're offering menus of options uh, on which a, um, a user can indicate preferences. Of course, we're less flexible, it's more constrained on the right-hand side for the click-based setting, uh, and there's much more freedom and uh, probably also much more natural to, to, for, for people to interact uh, in an environment like on the left-hand side here. So, uh, some advantages here. The flexibility on the left-hand side of the, of the dialogue-based interaction um, advantages on the right-hand side. It's for, from the system's point of view, certainly it may be easier to understand uh, the user. Um, 
you don't just, and it's also a bit more robust, you don't just give one option, you give a small set of options and then you let the user choose from these options. Um, meaning that if, if you're not sure, you don't have to put, the system doesn't have to put all of its uh, credit, so to say, on, on one option, but can give a small menu. Um, if, uh, the, for instance, on the left-hand side with the dialogue, that particular song was, was had not been a good choice uh, uh, for the user, then we would have to back off to another choice and maybe another choice. Um, now, it's important uh, to realize, uh, and the, the next few slides will uh, attempt to do this, it's important to realize that these conversational recommender systems are not isolated. They're, they connect to lots of other systems and uh, like with so many um, technological developments in our field, um, you might see the same thing resurface a few years later under a different name, uh, or it might be slightly different. And so uh, at the conference we'll have, uh, I think even today, a, a session for instance on interactive recommender systems. Um, Often uh, an interactive recommender system uh, goes through these, these two steps that you sh see here in the middle. Um, so the system will give uh, a list uh, of options. Uh, user uh, chooses something, uh, we collect feedback, and then we'll give the next set of options. Um, the conversational setting um, allows for different types of action, interaction, more types of interaction. Um, importantly also, uh, we can ask questions. We can ask questions about items, about attributes, uh, maybe even about uh, context. And what's interesting, or what I find interesting, is um, if you think of the, the recommendation that a recommendations, plural, that a system makes as actions, then if, if the system is uncertain about an action to take, uh, let it uh, deal with its uncertainty by asking questions t to the user. Uh, and then in that way become a bit more certain about uh, the uh, recommendations it is about to, to offer. And then when it has reached a certain level of certainty, take an action. Um, another uh, line of work uh, that is connected to conversational recommenders is uh, uh, TDSs, task-oriented dialogue systems. Uh, typically, uh, in a task-oriented dialogue system, um, yeah. it might be about uh, booking a trip to Amsterdam, um, finding accommodation uh, to, uh, to uh, support your visit to, to, to Rexis. Um, so task orientation uh, as opposed to uh, chatbots that just mostly entertain um, rather than help support um, realizing a task. Um, in, so some of the things we're saying here, of course, are uh, none of this is binary. Uh, so of course in TDSs, it is not just about natural language understanding, but uh, there's a very strong emphasis on uh, Natural, and natural, natural language understanding, trying to understand what a user um, is saying. Uh, uh, the, of course, there's some emphasis on, uh, on recommendation, even in a, in a TDS system, uh, but it's usually not the main focus. Uh, in the conversational setting, conversational recommendation setting, sort of flipped. Of course, we need to do we need to understand a bit about the language that is being used uh, in our communication uh, with users. But that's not where the emphasis is. It's much more about understanding the need and the preferences uh, of users. Now, again, still we're still in the opening bits of the tutorial. So this is about uh, situating conversational recommenders is that somewhere in between search and recommendation on, on either side. Uh, in search we have the um, users uh, being able to 
to be very explicit about what their, their needs are uh, and recommendation, it, it's a lot uh, more implicit. With the CRSs, we're, we're somewhere in the middle. Um, we can use implicit information. We can ask uh, for users to um, be more explicit about uh, their needs. So I think it's, um, it's a natural combination. It's also um, a challenging combination, uh, you know, trying to understand when we should be uh, proactive, when we should be reactive, when we're sufficiently certain to take an action, and when maybe we need to first build up uh, more certainty b before taking an action. And so uh, we think it's a, it's a, the area matters for a number of reasons. Uh, to me personally, I think this last one uh, is, uh, is, is the most exciting one, uh, right? So uh, we, we take a, another step towards uh, not people being replaced by machines, uh, but people working together with machines and uh, being much more explicit about this, this collaboration. Um, so it's not a, a human says something, machine does it, comes back. No, it's much more of a together we're trying to achieve something. Um, and I think that that's a cool area to work in. It's also uh, a complex area to work in. Uh, the other uh, uh, important dimensions here, um, according to us, are, uh, right, um, we've made a lot of progress in search, in recommendations. Uh, there's still a lot more progress to make in the space in the middle where we combine implicit and explicit statements and information uh, about users. Uh, it's also uh, a nice point of convergence for lots of hot topics uh, in, the, in, the, in the research space around us. Uh, naturally, uh, uh, reinforcement learning, uh, NLP, uh, conversational AI, uh, lots of concerns about explainability. Um, why is, a, is, a, is, a, is our recommender taking certain actions? Uh, and it's actually explainability both ways. Humans explaining their needs uh, to a system and, and systems also explaining their suggestions and, and worries um, or, or uncertainties, I should say, uh, to humans. Uh, this is a scan of uh, li recent literature uh, that uh, uses uh, those two phrases, conversation star, recommend star, uh, on the DBLP. This is uh, an interesting growth. Uh, the, the plot, it, it just, we just count. There's nothing clever here. We just count uh, from 2000 onwards. Uh, 2021 is not complete, as you know. Uh, but uh, you see that the, there's a clear trend here. A lot of this work on the conversation star, recommend star, uh, naturally is, uh, is at uh, Rexis, but you see lots of the other usual spots uh, show up as well. And that's, it's interesting because this is a mixture of uh, communities, uh, recommendation folks, search folks, um, web people, NLP people, more data mining people, machine learning people, uh, all of these communities somehow have an interest in this topic. And this is just a top 12 venues, if I, yeah, top 12. Um, but it, uh, if there's a very, very long tail here of uh, lots of other communities uh, becoming active in this space. The survey, um, so it was published uh, this summer. Uh, it's a typical survey. Uh, yeah, we, we, we actually do survey a very large number of papers, we try to categorize them, organize them, try to identify main developments, and we hope it's, it's useful uh, for, for other people to, to get started uh, in this space. So most of the tutorial is based on, on the survey. Uh, we've sampled bits and pieces uh, from throughout uh, the survey. Um, What's in this picture? Uh, a few things. Uh, we'll walk 
through this, uh, well, the fonts are messed up a bit. That's because uh, we had to swap the laptops at a, at a very late stage. Uh, weren't able to check uh, the, the fonts, but I hope it's still uh, readable. User interface, conversation strategy module in the middle, and then recommender engine on the right. Um, the, um, the challenges that we'll be addressing, those five challenges, uh, are placed around these three main boxes. Uh, natural language understanding, uh, preference elicitation, uh, multi-turn recommendation strategies, trading off exploration and exploitation, and then uh, that bullet at the top, evaluation and simulation. And so those are the five challenges. And I'll, what I'd like to do now is uh, devote one slide to each of those challenges. And then I'll, after that, I'll hand over to uh, Wen Chang, who will uh, jump into the first of the five challenges. So this first challenge has to do with uh, preference elicitation, uh, right? being able to ask questions. And we think this is one of the cool and distinguishing aspects of conversational recommendation. Uh, ask users about what they like, uh, certain attributes, certain topics, certain items, certain categories. Uh, use this to narrow down uh, the number of candidates. Also use this perhaps to, uh, to come up with uh, more surprising results. Um, and so we'll, uh, we'll focus on uh, on a few important papers, or we think inspiring papers um, in this space. So the, the challenge here is when to ask, what to ask, what to ask about. And of course, once you've collected answers, uh, how to use these answers to, in order to influence um, the recommendations that you're about to make. The second challenge, um, the fact that we're not taking a single action, it's not a single turn um, interaction with a user, it's multi-turn. Uh, when we ask a question, we ask a question to users because uh, we want to use the feedback in order to make uh, different, better recommendations. So, at least as that next action uh, of making uh, the recommendation, but we might still have a, a high degree of uncertainty. We might actually uh, go back and ask further questions, or we might take an action, observe what the user does in response to the action. Um, there might be a positive reward, a negative reward, and we, we might want to drill down again uh, on items, on attributes, um, and then adapt. That's the second uh, big challenge that we'll dive into. Uh, the third, natural language understanding and generation. Uh, so if you look at uh, both the literature and systems uh, in practice, being used in practice, uh, you'll see uh, a lot of rule-based or template-based systems. Uh, template-based, especially in practice, template-based systems are uh, often a, a first starting point uh, because of uh, you know, limited risk uh, on, the, on the service provider side. Uh, with a neural method, um, there might be risks about what, the, uh, what questions or uh, what lexical items um, the recommender might generate. Uh, uh, so there are interesting challenges to address here. Uh, on the one hand, the, the, the sort of safety of templates comes with, uh, yeah, it's, it's less natural, uh, it's, it's, uh, it quickly appears to be repetitive. Uh, and so there's also a, a bunch of work that we survey uh, in the big survey that tries to combine the, uh, the best of both worlds. Uh, use the templates as sort of a, a core semantic anchor, uh, but then learn, learn variations. 
within the setting of a template. Fifth, uh, sorry, fourth um, of the five uh, challenges, uh, this trade-off between exploration and exploitation. Uh, once we have a bit of an understanding uh, of our users' uh, preferences, um, what we might want to do is uh, exploit that, use, those, use that understanding, um, come with recommendations, we might have a risk of not learning anything new about uh, users. Um, because of that, uh, uh, the experience might be less than optimal. Um, and so we might want to do a, a bit of exploration, try new things, trying out new things. We could just do a suggestion or we could ask uh, before doing a suggestion. And we'll talk about a few papers uh, that, that highlight different angles of this trade-off. And then finally, and, and uh, certainly not uh, least importantly, uh, simulation and evaluation. So how do we evaluate these conversational systems, um, not just uh, on achieving the overall task of, of recommending something useful uh, or entertaining or something that fits a user's preferences. Uh, so not just measuring at the end of the interaction, but also measuring quality, success or failure uh, while uh, the conversation is ongoing. And we have to uh, evaluate not just uh, the recommender and the quality of what it uh, offers, but also um, the quality of, of the interaction. Are we uh, suggesting the right things, uh, asking the right things? Are we asking it in a suitable way? Uh, could we do better? Um, now, what, one thing that's happening uh, is um, we've seen the development of quite a few uh, simulators uh, in, our, um, in our community over the last few years, especially to address uh, this understanding of turn level performance of both dimensions, recommendation quality uh, and interaction quality. All right, so those are the five challenges. Um, and uh, this is where we are in the, um, in the table of contents. The five challenges, uh, we'll, go, we'll start with the preference elicitation. Um, to multi-turn strategies, NLU, uh, explore, exploit, and then finally uh, I'm, I'm spending a bit more time on the evaluation and simulation. The break will be probably towards the end of 2.2, uh, so um, just after multi-turn strategies. Let's see, so now we're gonna do something complex, switch to uh, Wen Chang, who should be online and who should be taking over the screen now. Let's see if that all works. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, that works fine. Okay, so is uh, animation smooth? Yeah, we can, yeah. See, you, we can see you on the screen. So uh, I'll step away now from the mic and, and leave it to you, Wenchang. Okay. Okay, so should I start now? Yeah, please, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Good morning. Okay, it's uh, uh, it's the morning in the Europe, but uh, in the but in the afternoon of Asia. So anyway, so I'm glad to uh, see you. Um, I'm, thank you for interest to, to come to uh, for interest uh, on the topic of conversational recommendation. Uh, I'm Wen Chang uh, from National University of Singapore. Okay, uh, now I'm going to uh, introduce uh, five challenges, uh, uh, several of uh, five challenges uh, of conversational recommendation system. Uh, the first one that uh, I want to go through is uh, question-based user preference elicitation. So one of the key challenges or one of the key properties for conversational recommendation system is uh, it is able to ask questions 
uh, to the user uh, to know uh, the user preference. Uh, this is a key difference uh, that distinguish uh, traditional static recommendation system and the conversational recommendation system. So uh, one of the most important challenge or, or research question is to study how to, um, how to ask questions to elicit user preference. Okay, so there are many ways to ask questions. Um, basically, um, we, uh, we summarized the two most uh, important types of uh, questions. So one is asking about items. This means the system uh, continues to display uh, items to, to the users to ask them to select whether they like it or not like it. Uh, once, get, uh, once the system gets the user feedback, then the system will update uh, and uh, estimate the user preference again for the next term of uh, recommendation. So, uh, so this is uh, asking about items uh, in, in, uh, it, um, before, before the topic, uh, be before the emergency of a conversational recommendation system. Uh, this asking about items are also known as uh, interactive uh, recommendation system. Okay, so the, the okay, th this is the first type of uh, question to ask. The second type of question to ask is, uh, is ask, ask about attributes. So uh, in this way, in which this way, the system does not directly display the items for the user to choose, um, uh, but instead, uh, the this uh, the system displays some attributes. So the attributes means the features means the descriptive features that uh, describe uh, one of the um, or certain aspect of the attribute uh, of the item. For example, in the video recommendation scenario, uh, here uh, in the in the uh, right parts of the slides, it demonstrates a video recommendation scenario, right? So there are a lot of attributes for videos like humor, music, celebrity, animation, affection. All these are attributes, the descriptive attributes uh, uh, of the items. So the system can yeah sometimes ask or somehow ask the, uh, whether the whether the user like certain attributes of the item and uh, once the uh, system gets the user feedback uh, the system will yeah make a recommendation accordingly. Okay, so in this subsection, uh, 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 I will summarize several representative works of asking items and asking attributes. Okay, so let's come to the uh, the 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 uh, methods of asking items. So the first method that I want to introduce is a fact, uh, latent factor-based method. Okay, so you know in, uh, tra uh, in traditional uh, recommendation system, we usually have um, we uh, one uh, we usually have the latent factor models, right? So, for example, we have uh, user item uh, interaction matrix. Then we need to we uh, in order to do the recommendation, we we usually perform the uh, matrix matrix decomposition, right? To decomposition to decompose the, the latent uh, factors, uh, uh, which is important to the uh, recommendation or user item interaction. So, so let's say uh, through the uh, through the matrix decomposition, right? For each items, we will get a vector or embedding for the vector, right? So each dimension of the vector uh, is associated with the latent factor. Okay, so the so in in the in the method of asking about items, the key idea is to ask uh, is to uh, ask uh, users preference uh, on items uh, which is is associated with a certain latent factor. Okay, for example, uh, in the left part of the slide. Uh, we demonstrated a work published in Rexis uh, several years ago. Um, they, uh, first they performed the matrix decomposition and uh, then each time the authors choose a latent factor and uh, based on the latent factor, it chose two items to display to users. Okay, one is a strongly positively correlated with this, with, uh, with uh, the chosen latent factor. And the other is uh, strongly negatively correlated with the latent factor. Okay, then it asks the, uh, the system asks the user to choose 
which one he prefer or prefer them equally. If the, if the user choose the one which is strongly uh, associated with this factor, then uh, the, the, it indicates uh, that the user, perhaps the user likes this uh, factor. But if the user choose the one uh, which is negatively co uh, correlated with, uh, with this factor, perhaps the user does not like this factor. Okay, so if the user, yeah, the system also uh, provide a, a choice that uh, indicates the, the user's preference equally to the two uh, items. The, perhaps this indicates that the user does not care about this item or is, is not, not sure about this item. Uh, 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 so, sorry, not 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 item, but attributes. If the system uh, again, uh, if the if the user choose uh, the choose that he prefers these two item uh, equally, then perhaps uh, the the user does not care about these chosen attributes. Uh, okay, so but 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 sometimes the. The choosing uh, only one or two items to for the user's feedback uh, will will be affected by the noisy factors, right? Um, will be affected by the noises. Okay, so uh, sometimes it's also possible to demonstrate two groups of items for the user to choose a preference. Okay, this is uh, illustrated in the in the right part of the slide. Here we have we have uh, factor one, which is uh, illustrated in the x axis, and uh, we have two groups, right? The, the the red group and the green group, which which uh, which are which lie in the in the negative end or and the positive end of factor one separately. So so uh, so the system just uh, displays these two groups of items and asks the user whether uh, whether the the, the user like the, the red group or the green group. Okay, so so then the based on based, based on the based on this, the system will infer the user's uh, preference. Okay, so the second one is the second uh, method for asking our items uh, are what we call Bayesian preference preference elicitation elicitation. Okay, for this method, uh, the system does not uh, uh, rep does not uh, the, 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 for this method the, the for this method uh, the user preference are represented as a distribution instead of a single vector. So uh, so it help uh, so the the assumption or the solution the idea of the solution is that. Um, uh, up, uh, from the sampling, uh, we, we, we can each time we sample a uh, vector from the user uh, preference distribution and then calculate the, calculate the user's uh, uh, preference on each items and ask uh, and choose item to ask to the user and, uh, and uh, get the user feedback and then update the model. Okay, let's see the details. Uh, First, uh, let's say uh, for the first equation, we can say x. X means uh, xj means the vector of item, and ui means one of items or the instance item sampled from the user in distribution i. So ui means uh, ui is a dot product, right? Uh, here we call it as a utility function. Okay, so but but this but recall that uh, user the user preference is a distribution, right? It's not not a vector. So we need to calculate the expectation, uh, which is the integration over all over all UI uh, distribution. So this e here, this e is uh, indicates the user's preference on a certain item, right? So we call this is an utility. Okay, then uh, based on this utility, we'll choose the item with the maximum expected utility for the user i. Then we choose this item to display to the user. And then we will get the user feedback, whether the user like it or not. Then we, are, we will we, we can update the, our estimation of the user preference based on the Bayesian rule, right? Mm, here, this is, this is uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what we call um, posterior uh, 
as a, a, a posterior probability calculation, right? Okay, so in the in the most naive form, we just uh, display one single item for the user's feedback. But uh, there are many variants for the for the uh, item select strategy. For example, we can also uh, the, uh, choose pairwise comparison query, right? Uh, display two. Uh, items and ask the user to choose uh, which one he prefer. And we also have a slate query, which means we display a list of items for the user to choose. Okay, so uh, let's come to the, the third uh, type of method. The, the, this is uh, the, this type of method use reinforcement learning. Recall that in the previous two terms, uh, pre previous two methods, they does not consider the sequential dependency uh, of the conversation terms. But actually, the conversation is uh, a conversation is, is a dependent sequence, right? So the first turn might be uh, the might affect the second turn, right? So so it's uh, also possible or it's important to build the dependency uh, of over the turns. So to optimize the long-term reward, which means during this whole session, we optimize the total amount of click. Okay, so uh, so the solution usually applies, uh, usually uh, employs a uh, reinforcement learning. Okay, let's take a look at the example in the slide. Uh, it demonstrates a paper published on Cigar last year. Okay, so we can see uh, we can see this loop from the graph. Uh, let's go through the loops. Uh, go over the loop from the graph. Okay, so this graph is a user item interaction group, uh, graph, uh, which is very common in graph-based recommendation. Based on this graph, um, uh, the uh, the users can calculate the representation or the embedding for each. Uh, item for user uh, for, 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 for each item and uh, each user. Uh, they just use common graph convolutional neural networks. Okay, after we get the representation or the embedding for each item, then, then we can use this uh, embedding as the state vector to fit to the Q network. Q network just take in each item's embedding and uh, calculate the expected value score and uh, choose the one or several one to ask to the user. And then the user will get the feedback, uh, whether, the, whether he likes it or not. Once we get the feedback, then we will update the graph, right? So if the user likes the item, then there will be a new, a new age between this uh, user node and the item node. Okay, then the loops run so on and so forth. Uh, okay, so okay, there are uh, uh, okay that that, that are uh, those are three types of methods that is asking items. Then let's come to the method that asking attributes. Okay, so the first uh, method uh, we call a sequential model. Um, okay, so uh, let's uh, look at the real story from YouTube. Here in the left part of the slide, uh, I we, we, we demonstrate a screenshot, a, a toy screenshot from um, YouTube, right? Uh, several years ago, YouTube conducted an experiment where uh, where when a user log in to the YouTube app, the YouTube will pop up a box to ask the user to choose the item, uh, the, the attributes or the topics that uh, uh, he's interested in. After the user choose the items, uh, so sorry, sorry, choose the attributes, then the system will uh, make recommendation according to the user's choice. Okay, so how does, uh, how does uh, the YouTube uh, implement this function? They use a sequential prediction model. So let's see here. Uh, the the uh the the product or the system model or treats the user's watching history as a sequence of triples. The triple contains topic ID. The topic here means attributes. The topic ID, video ID, and the feature context. 
all the uh, each each video is represented uh, as a trip. Right, so here we have a six source. Then the uh, then this system just uh, use employ one LSTM to predict the two models this sequence and predict the next uh, topic or next attributes the user want to watch. Okay, this is attribute prediction. Uh, then uh, the how to integrate the predicted attributes for item recommendation. Uh, the author in, uh, the authors employ another uh, LSTM. Again, uh, inputs the to uh, topic ID, video ID, and the feature context uh, triple sequence in. But at this time, it's increase. Uh, but but this time, when the when when uh, in the last step of prediction, it inter integrates. Uh, label topic ID. Uh, yeah, this is the predicted one. The it is, it is the output of the first LSTM. Okay, so then this integrate integrates the predicted uh, attribute for the item prediction. But the model is very simple. Just the two L, two standard LSTMs. Uh, okay. So, but, but, but there are more stories about the attributes choosing. So the, the second uh, method that I want to show, uh, that I want to share are uncertainty driven method. Okay, so, um, so it is based on a philosophy. What type of attributes should we ask? So we can imagine that if a system is very sure uh, a user will like this I uh, will like an attribute. It does not bother to, it does not uh, need to ask, right? Because the system is very sure the, the user like uh, attributes. In the, in the same logic, if the system is very sure that a user does not like attributes, it will also not necessary to ask this attributes. Right, uh, because the answer are already known. So, uh, so what uh, So uh, uh, under this philosophy, what type of attributes should we ask? The uncertain one. But how to calculate the uncertainty? Okay, this um, uh, there is a method also published in uh, Ansigar last year, uh, which estimates the uh, uncertainty of attributes based on the preference on, on items. Okay, let's uh, have a detailed look at it. So let, let's say uh, this is this this is uh, this is uh, um, applied in um, e-commerce uh, scenario, right? Let's say we have uh, we have uh, many products in the e-commerce platform, and uh, there is an attribute called cotton indicates whether uh, indicating whether a uh, product contains the material of cotton. Okay, so if we want to calculate the uncertainty of cotton, we just uh, uh, have two sets of items. Uh, uh, one set of items contains all the item, all the items that contains the attribute of cotton. And then the other uh, item set contains all the item that does not contain the contain the the attribute of cotton. Okay, then the system estimates the average preference score over the items of these two sets, right? So so here s like here s like means the average uh, preference score on the on this items contains the attribute cotton. Okay, so it's as like reflects, estimates how the user, how likely the user will like the uh, attribute cotton. And in the same logic, we have a set uh, that does not contain all the, uh, does not contain the attributes of cotton, right? So here, if we average the score 
the user's preference score on the on all the on this data set. So we will have a as dislike indicates how likely the user does not like the preference of the pattern. Then the uncertainty score is calculated by it calculates the absolute difference of S like and S dislike. The smaller the preference confidence indicates the more uncertain attributes. Okay, so yeah, here um, uh, we have the third type of method uh, that uh, decide which attribute to ask to the user. Uh, it is called explainable recommendation based method. Okay, so let's say uh, let's see an example in the very left part of uh, this slide. A explanation. Yeah, here here this is uh, this is commonly applied, uh, commonly adopted uh, offline recommendation model uh, or offline explainable recommendation model. Here we can see we have UI and the VJ. UI means the embedding of the user. VJ means the embedding of the item, and then. Sorry, and then we can calculate Z I G Z hat I G mean uh, this this the hat I G uh, measures the degree of match of U I and uh, V J here the J right uh, but based on the Z J uh, we can calculate R I G yeah this is a the commonly used uh, uh, recommendation score right uh, if I J is high we recommend the, uh, the user. Okay, and uh, then we have SIJ. Yeah, the SIJ is the explanation uh, vector. Uh, this uh, each each dimension of SIJ is associated with the edge with an attribute that the user might care about. Okay, the high score means uh, user cares about uh, this dimension. Okay, this is a this is a. Uh, uh, yeah, common explainable recommendation system, but we can use this to uh, to act as a conversational recommendation system, right? So we can each time, yeah, yeah. After we train this, uh, to train this uh, model offline, uh, we can use it use it to interact with the online online manner. Okay, here. Yeah, let's say that we, we can say we can say B uh, critiquing here this model. Yeah, let's say if we have trained a explainable uh, conversation, or uh, if we have a trained, uh, we, if we have trained a uh, explainable recommendation system here, and then we just uh, for each time we just uh, predict uh, the SIJ and uh, ask the user to uh, critic on it, uh, whether yeah whether he care about. Uh, uh, care about a certain dimension or especially the dimension with a high value. Yeah, this means the system believe the attributes should be, uh, should catch you the attention that the user should be care about it. But uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, whether the user really care about it, then it asks to the user. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what we call the explainable recommendation based method. Okay, the key idea of this method is, right, is that uh, when we calculate the recommendation score, we also try to um, try to calculate the reason, try to predict the reason and ask the user feedback of the reason. Then, uh, then the once we collect this uh, the user's feedback of the reason, also uh, also the recommendation score, then we will update the model. Yeah, actually, we have there are a lot of works uh, recently on the on the question based user preference elicitation. Um, in this tutorial, we have demonstrated uh, the the intuitively demonstrated the major or the, the most important ones. But um, yeah, there are a lot of works, and we have summarized them and uh, ca characterized them uh, in our survey. Here and we characterize them in multiple dimensions, like uh, what to ask, asking mechanism, basic model, type of user feedback, and the multi-turn strategy. So, um, if you are interested in this uh, direction, please refer to our survey for the details. Okay, uh, we have finished uh, the uh, two point one. Let's come to two point two. Multi-term conversational recommendation strategy. Okay, so uh, in 
in in the previous one in the question based uh, user preference elicitation uh, uh, subsection uh, we we introduced uh, some works that ask that try to ask questions to the users but uh, you can see that uh, conversation is a multi-term process and uh, uh, each uh, turn uh, are the, the terms uh, there are complex dependencies among terms right so actually we we should not only concern consider for each term we what question should we ask instead we need to consider um consider the session based uh performance right uh, in a session the system can choose to ask attributes and make recommendations. Here, make recommendations is identical to the um, to uh, to ask items in the preference subsection. Okay. Uh, in uh, what what we want to emphasize is that here, conversation recommendation session, a system can choose to ask attributes and make recommendations. In a multi-term conversation, a system can choose, it is free to choose whether to ask or uh, make recommendation, as long as it can make suspect, successful recommendations with less terms of interactions. So yeah, so yeah, during this process, uh, we have a lot of uh, core challenges. For example, a system need to decide which item to recommend and uh, which actually attribute to uh, to recommend or to ask when to ask questions and when to make recommendations how to adapt the user feedbacks in order to make successful recommendations with less terms of interactions so so the idea is that we optimize the whole session as a unit instead of a single term okay um let's come to yeah, some works uh, again we will start uh, uh, we will uh, in this section we will start from um, uh, a simple method yeah tier one this this one this this is called a CRM model uh, which is published uh, on cigar uh, 18. Uh, this uh, this one is believed to be one of the preliminary work uh, towards uh, the asking Term. So in this work, the authors just put uh, three. Uh, hello, it seems the network has some problem. Oh, okay, uh, it, 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 it get, get fine again. Okay, so uh, let's continue. The CRM has three parts of existing models. It integrates a uh, beef tracker, uh, which is uh, adapted from the dialogue system. And uh, it uh, contains a recommender, which is a uh, yeah, basic uh, uh, factorization machine. And then it has a policy network, uh, which is, is also a standard uh, method. They just, uh, they just, uh, the authors just uh, put all the three components together. Okay, so yeah, let's take a look at the, uh, the, the, some details of these three components for, for, for this one belief tracker. The belief tracker uh, tracks, uh, because a conversational recommendation system is a multi-term process, right? So they're, they're, need a, they're needing a belief tracker to track, to keep track of multi, uh, the information of the multiple uh, terms. Right, so here we have a brief tracker. The input is the current and the past utterance representation DT, and it uh, uh, applies multiple LSTM to uh, keep track of the probability distribution of attributes, whether the user likes the attributes, whether the user does not like the attributes. So here, the output is the ST. F means, each F means, uh, is associated with uh, attributes. So here we have L attribute here, F1, F2, blah, blah, FL, right? Each F, again, each F is associated with an attribute, indicating whether a user like it or not. Okay, uh, then uh, they have a recommender uh, components. This component, uh, this component is a standard factorization machine. It contains UM means uh, user uh, user embedding and IM means item embedding and ST. ST, uh, ST is the output of the, 
uh, beef tracker indicating whether user like an attribute or not. Uh, again, then we have uh, we have a, a policy network. Um, uh, this decide which um, which action to perform. Here, uh, the state the state is uh, is the output of the beef, tra beef tracker, the FL F one to FL, and then the action the action uh, is the, uh, consists of two parts. The first parts uh, are here A one to AL. Uh, they are each A each A associate uh, is associated with an attribute. If here this AI is chosen, then the system will ask the corresponding attributes whether the user like it. Okay, here the action also contains um, contains an action uh, called R rec. A rec. This means if if this A rec uh, action is chosen, then the system will recommend the top key items ranked by the recommender system directly. Uh, directly push the top key items to the user. Ask the user's feedback. Okay, uh, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, this this is the CRM model, but uh, you can see that um, these three components are quite loosely uh, connected. Let's revisit the conversational recommendation uh, process again. So let's say user starts uh, starts. Uh, uh, the session, the, the user will respond based on its preference, and uh, this uh, loop runs on and so forth. Uh, you can see the the sequence or the uh, the, the decision the decision. Uh, okay, I, I I mean the decision is very complex. Uh, the system. I mean the the the. the Dialogue the system will consider a lot of uh, a lot of information. I uh, you need to yeah uh, consider whether the uh, yeah well, which uh, which uh, attribute to ask and uh, what item to recommend, right? So so it it is not that easy just to use uh, just just to use uh, the beef tracker results. Uh, for the the policy decision as uh, as the CRM model ha has performed, uh, 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 what what I want to emphasize is that the recommendation during the conversational recommendation, the recommendation components and the conversation components need to have deep interaction or deep uh, cooperation. They need to closely work together to decide which action to which action to perform. For example, the recommendation components need to provide estimation of the user preference to support the conversation uh, component uh, to make the decision. And the conversation component is responsible for getting the information or feedback from the user. And uh, this feedback need to be fed to the recommendation components to estimate the user preference again for for better, uh, uh, for better uh, decision in the next turn. So yeah, so here the, the recommendation component and conversation components need to be strongly closed to uh, strongly closely uh, optimized together or interacted together. Okay, let's uh, look at uh, what this method is, uh, is doing. First, they use uh, attributes to predict item. So yeah, to be more precise, they use attribute from the conversation components to support the recommendation component to predict the items, right? So here uh, it's use, um, uh, it use a factorizing machine, but, uh, but improve it. So here in the first turn is, uh, is a standard uh, factorization machine, right? But the second turn, uh, Second term here, V means uh, item embedding, and P, P means uh, the embedding of attribute that is confirmed to be preferred, to be pre preferred by the user. Okay, the second term just uh, 
yeah, just uh, consider the preferred attributes for the item prediction. Okay, so this, again, this use uh, attribute from the conversation component to support the recommendation component to predict the item. This is one type of uh, deep interaction between conversation components and the interaction components. Okay, the loss here, uh, yeah, the, the loss is quite complex. We just uh, illustrated the idea. The idea is that um, um, when we calculate the, the loss, we need to consider the attribute preferred by the items. Or preferred by the uh, the users. Uh, uh, yeah, this is not this is different from the standard the Bayesian personali personalized uh, uh, ranking. Yeah, but we consider the attribute pre preferred by the user. Okay, so in the next, uh, uh, the system need to predict uh, using the uh, recommendation to predict the attribute to ask to the user. So this uh, represents the. Uh, uh, the support from the recommendation model to conversation model, right? So because because uh, we use the uh, recommendation model to predict attribute, these attributes are used to ask to the users. Right here, we also use the same uh, same. Uh, factorization machine. Here, U means user embedding, right? P means attribute embedding. Here, PI means the uh, attributes confirmed to be preferred by the user, uh, right? So here we use this one. We use the user embedding and uh, the attributes uh, uh, which has been confirmed by the user uh, to predict the preference, uh, the preference of the user. Okay, uh, yeah. Then we, then this method joint optimize the item ranking and attribute ranking simultaneously using multi-task learning mechanism. Okay, so the last for the strategy choosing, it also represents um, the deep uh, support or deep interaction from the conversation components and the uh, uh, recommendation components. Let's say it's uh, for the for the strategy, it also use uh, policy, it also use a policy network. But the state vector is carefully designed. Uh, so S entropy means the entropy of attributes. Uh, we collect the, the entropy of the, the attributes. The S preference means uh, the user, uh, we, we integrate the user preference of each attribute. And S history means the direct history. This is, uh, this is the information from the, the conversation component itself. And the S length means the candidate, uh, candidate item, item list length. Okay, the first uh, two are, are information from converse, uh, from a recommendation component. Sorry, uh, S entropy, S preference, and S length. All the three are from uh, recommendation components. And S history uh, information are from conversation components. Uh, the, the, Decision, the conversation decision maker integrates all the three or all the four types of information to make the decision. So this also reflects the deep uh, interaction or deep support uh, between conversation components and the recommendation components. Okay, so based on the the based on last work here, I, 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 I mean I mean this work, uh, I mean this work based on this work. Uh, the the authors from the same team continue to develop a conversational recommendation system, but this time they involve graph and uh, convert the conversational recommendation from into a past reasoning problem graph. Okay, let's see the, here the here. Here, uh, we have uh, uh, we have a conversation history, right? Uh, uh, I'm looking at the user. Say, I'm looking for a dance music artist. Okay, this this uh, is for uh, this app application scenario is for artist recommendation. Here, the orange node means the user. Uh, Tom, Alice, Thomas means the user, and um, the blue. 
a uh, blue node means the item which is artist in this scenario. So for example, Michael Jokes, Michael Jackson. Uh, it is uh, it, it is the artist, right? The yellow one means the attributes of the of the artist. So here uh, the graph. Here the graph, uh, uh, the graph contains uh, three types of uh, node, right? Item, user, and attributes. Uh, yeah, if a user has visited uh, an item, then there there should be a link. If a user has a friendship relation with, uh, sorry, uh, if a user has specified that he likes an attribute, there should be a link. If a use, if the uh, if an item. Uh, is associated with an attribute, then the user, uh, sorry, the item and the attributes uh, node ha has also also has the age. Okay, so let us say let's have a have an example. So the user say I'm looking for a dance music artist. As a, this is Tom. Uh, Tom say I'm looking for a dance music artist. Then the Tom will has uh, will walk to the dance node. And then the system will ask, uh, will ask, uh, do you like rock music? Okay, the user reply yes. Then here we can walk from dance to rock. Uh, here I want to mention, uh, I want to mention that the, each time the system will only ask neighborhood item and a neighborhood attributes. Only the neighborhood. Yeah, this is this is the intuition. Uh, one of the intuitions that apply graph reasoning uh, on this part uh, on, on this problem. If we only if we only apply uh, if we only treat the neighborhood as a candidate, we can largely eliminate the candidates uh, item and candidates uh, attributes number. Right. Uh, so. Then the yeah then then the yeah for for yeah yeah uh, let's some the this start the story from another perspective. So for the uh, graph based recommendation, uh, the problem setting is usually that we from the user node and uh, just uh, find a path, walk 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 walk, find a path and uh, find the destination which should be recommended to the user right. So, but at each step. Um, we feel it's uh, we feel it's difficult to choose which direction or which node to go right. Uh, but at this point, uh, we introduce a conversation uh, mechanism to solve this problem. We just ask uh, if we don't know, uh, if a system don't know which node to go, we just ask the user uh, to confirm. Uh, uh, he to confirm his uh, preference. Okay, so we just uh, yeah 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 convert this conversation recommendation program as an interactive past reasoning program. Okay, uh, yeah yeah. Here we just the model it. Uh, um, let's see let's see some details. But uh, yeah yeah, there are a lot of a lot of details for this paper. But uh, let's let's just see see some details. Um. Uh, basically, the how to how to reason, right? How to reason? Uh, the authors the authors just uh, treat uh, the reasoning as a uh, message propagation over the graph. Let's say uh, they can they use the item node to rank the attribute node. Here, let's say here uh, v v four and v five are item node, right? They propagate gets message to the P1, uh, which is attribute node. Okay, this, this is to use item to rank attributes. Uh, this is modeled as a message passing from the item node to the attribute node. And then we, uh, they also, they also uh, from the same logic, they use the uh, attributes to rank item here. For example, P zero is the item. Oh, sorry, is the attribute, and the V one, V four, V five, V uh, yeah, V four are item. 
right? So the P0 propagates the message to V1, V0, V5, V4, V5. Okay, so, so here we have two ranking functions, which is yeah, SVI, yeah, this means we use, um, we use uh, user item and the preferred attributes to rank item. And we use user attri uh, attributes and uh, candidates item to rank uh, attributes. Okay, A is a bit complex, that's fine. Uh, if you are interested in, uh, you can refer to the original paper here. We put the title in the bottom of the slide. Okay, so yeah, but, but the, the idea is that if we if they introduce a graph uh, to constrain the conversational recommendation, this graph will become, uh, this uh, in, uh, recommendation process will become first explainable, second, uh, the candidate item and attributes will be greatly eliminated such that we can increase the recommendation accuracy. Okay, so okay, so the next work try to address the problem of how to adapt, how to adapt user feedback, or especially the negative feedback on the items. Okay, tra uh, the, the traditional method to address this problem is, is just uh, put the rejected items. During the conversation, yeah, if the user rejects the item, the system just, uh, a traditional method, uh, traditional method just uh, put the negative item as a negative example instance to up directly update to direct to uh, to directly to directly update the recommendation model but this uh, but yeah one item might contains a lot of might, might be associated uh, to many attributes right if uh, if you if we directly uh, use this uh, rejected item as a negative example it uh, will treat all the associated uh, uh, attributes as a negative attribute. Uh, it will score down all the all the associated attributes. For example, uh, if the if the negative sample is uh, is red, uh, is a red iPhone. Uh, this means if uh, a system recommends a red iPhone to the user and the user reject it. If we treat this directly treat this red iPhone as a negative example to update the recommendation model, it will score down all the uh, items that is red or that is uh, uh, has a iPhone brand. But actually, we don't know whether the user like uh, this. Uh, what, 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 uh, what the user like is red or. Uh, whether the user dislike is red or iPhone or both, we don't know, right? But uh, during conversation, we need to consider this this uh, this phenomenon. For example, if the user reject red iPhone, but he said he liked red, then we can infer what the user dislike is uh, is uh, Apple brand. Right. Okay. So based on this intuition, the user, uh, based on this intuition, the authors uh, propose a method. Uh, yeah. Uh, here, uh, from the uh, yeah, let's go through this method from the left part to the right part. Here in the left part, left in the left left part, the user, uh, the the authors just uh, gets the exam, uh, gets the embeddings from the user item attributes uh, based on the, the user item attributes graph using graph neural, neural networks. This is a very standard operation here. Uh, there, there is, uh, then the next is something new. Uh, the authors use three buckets to store three type of embeddings. Here, uh, are orange, red, and a green demonstrate these two, uh, these three buckets. The orange bucket store 
the embeddings of attributes that is rejected by the user. Here we, we, we see A minus means the attribute that is rejected by the user. And then we have a green, a green attribute, which is the attributes, which are the, are the embeddings of attribute that is accepted by the user. And the third bucket is a green, is a green one. It stores the embeddings of the items that is rejected by the user. So this, this is I minus U, right? Obviously we have a user embedding here. Then uh, we will, yeah, to capture the, the, the intuition we mentioned just now, that's the user, perhaps the user uh, like one item, uh, like one attributes, but rejected uh, some, some attributes. We need to distangle the user preference uh, with uh, with uh, liked attributes and uh, disliked item. Okay, how to do it? Uh, they just use uh, here. Uh, they just integrate the green embedding. Yeah, the, the here here the green embedding is the integration of all the green buckets. Right. So, so they have several embeddings that of attributes that is uh, rejected, uh, accepted by the user. Then they aggregate it into one embedding, and then it's uh, use uh, it use this uh, aggregated embedding to uh, to integrate with the rejected item uh, embedding. So it. So yeah, for each embedding after integration, it has a new embedding. So this this mimic uh, the logic uh, I mentioned just now. If the user rejects an red iPhone, but it's uh, but the user express expressed that he liked uh, red attributes, then after this integration, the new embedding must have more precise. Uh, estimation of what attributes the user like or dislike. Then it has an integration for uh, integrate to one model, no uh, one attributes. Uh, also, yeah, here we have uh, we have another integration. Uh, this this use uh, user embedding to integrate with uh, aggregated embedding of negative attributes. Okay, uh, yeah. This, this mimic the process that if a user rejects an attribute, it does not like it. So uh, yeah, this might, this might not be captured during the embedding training, right? So, we, so the authors just uh, do this integration and then they have four, four embeddings and integrates into one uh, all embedding. Uh, this embedding is, uh, it can be regarded as advanced version of um, user embedding. And then they use this embedding to calculate the preference uh, of item and attributes for the recommendation. Okay, then um, actually uh, we have, um, uh, due, to the, due to the time limitation, we, we just skip. Uh, some other methods to uh, uh, towards the multi-term conversational recommendation st strategy. Instead, we just summarize the, uh, the, the their programs and the key effort to address them. So, so yeah, uh, in multi-term conversational recommendation strategy, there is a problem called uh, there. Uh, there is a, a, a problem introduced by too many items. Yeah, if we if we have too many items and uh, treat each item uh, 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 as a, as an action, as right? for each item we need to decide the action, uh, this will cause a lot a very large acting space for uh, for reinforcement learning. So to solve this problem, um, the this these authors uh, Ali uh, at all use introduce uh, actor critic. Uh, framework uh, to uh, to evaluate all the candidate item and attribute first, and prune off uh, most of the item and attributes, and uh, then do the and then that's the that's the conversational recommendation policy network to choose the 
eventual item to ask and uh, recommend. Okay, there is another problem is that uh, the reward of the uh, the, the reward of the conversation is very sparse. Uh, uh, usually, we will have uh, we will have a reward that uh, in, uh, uh, we will have a reward of successful recommendation. But you can see uh, the session is might be very long, and if we only get the reward of uh, correct recommendation, then the reward might be very sparse. Uh, then yeah, to address this problem, uh, some authors. Uh, try to use more fine grain reward to help the commerce uh, to help the policy network to converge. Okay, so let's end up here. Uh, I think we can take some questions and uh, then we'll have a break. Uh, then then we'll have uh, our the, the, the second uh, second phase of our uh, tutorial. Okay, we're happy to take some questions. Do you have any questions? Hi, Wenxiang, uh, can you hear yes. me? Yes. Okay, so it's 11 here now. I think that's officially the break period. So okay. I'm, I'm looking sure. at uh, the, the people in orange. Should we break now and then start with the questions after the break? Okay, so uh, what do you guys feel? Should we break now? And then uh, once we come back from the break, we start with a Q&A. I see some nods. Break now, hands up. Break uh, questions now. The breakers win. <laughs> so uh, let's get back here in half an hour. That's 11.30 here Amsterdam time. Then, um, the, some questions have come in on the chat. So the, your, your colleague in the back, I think, has a phone with, uh, with a bunch of questions. So if you can start with the, with the questions, uh, Wen Chiang, in half an hour, would that work for you? Mm, sure, no problem. Okay, so, so see you in half an hour. Okay, see you.
Um, did we lose uh, Wen Chang, or is he, is he still online? Uh, I'm still here. Okay, good to hear you. Uh, everyone is slowly coming back. Okay. Um, so one of the volunteers collected um, questions in the chat. Uh, was that you? If, so if you can perhaps uh, share those questions, that'd be great. And then Wen Chang, maybe you and I can, can you see me? Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, then maybe you and I can perhaps uh, try and answer them. So those are the questions and there were some replies. In the okay, are there any the open uh, questions left? No. Oh, all the questions but have been answered? Yeah, there were three questions and they were answered in the chat. That's easy. Yeah. Oh, Chong Min uh, responded. Fantastic. Thank you, Chong Min. Are there any other questions from the room? Please go ahead. So how do, how do you identify the attributes to ask questions about? Okay, so how do you identify them? How do you find them? So do you want to take that question, uh, Chung Wen, or uh, Wayne Chung? Did you hear that question? No, oh, no, I haven't heard. Uh, I, I lost it just now. Okay, no worries. The question is, um, in, uh, in preference elicitation, uh, you can ask yes. questions. Uh, ask for a user's uh, preferences for certain attributes. How do you identify these attributes? Right? Yeah. How do I identify this attribute? Okay. Yeah, and okay. so, so, so yeah. sorry, and I guess there are two parts to this. One is, if this is, uh, if you have a whole list of attributes, maybe you just go down the list and you, how, that, to, that, list? Uh, how to shrink that list, how to pick, but also mm. it might be that it's, uh, that there are no, explicit attributes and you have to come up with maybe some latent uh, aspects that you want to ask a question about. Was that another part of your question? Say that I like a red uh, mobile phone, Yeah. Uh, but I need a particular type of red or... Um, okay, and so... I don't always know which attributes that are important to look for. Okay, so uh, the example is a, a, a user interested potentially in a, in a red mobile phone, but then uh, making sure you ask about the, a particular type of red, and then also which are the attributes, how should you order those attributes when asking about them? How should you prioritize mm -hmm. them? How should I prioritize the attributes, right? So, so I, I, I don't yes. fully get the answer. I don't fully get the question. Uh, how, how do you prioritize uh, attributes that you want to ask a question about? So you have a, 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 a product catalog, a product tree. Uh, in the, every item in this product catalog has a, a bunch of attributes. Some may be missing, but there may be dozens of attributes per item. You can't ask questions about all of these attributes. How do you pick the most pertinent one? Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me. Uh, yeah. Answer. Uh, give. Give some my my own opinion. Okay. So first, uh, for the first part of the uh, question, um, uh, how do we identify? How do I identify um, a list of? Uh, 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 how, how do I identify the attributes? Okay. Actually, um, in the in. My opinion is uh, somehow similar with Martin. So uh, we have two settings. Uh, uh, in the first setting, uh, we have a predefined list of the attributes. So this is very common uh, in, uh, in e-commerce uh, uh, scenario because in e-commerce scenario, we, for each item or for each product, we do have several attributes. Right, so for, for, for products, we know it is whether it is a book, whether uh, it contains a material of cotton or, cotton, or whether, uh, yeah, 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 was the, the color of this product. So all these are, are can be predefined according to the application scenario. Okay, so if we do not, uh, okay, actually, actually, um, we, uh, there is another, 
um, type of work which is uh, which which aims to give tags assign tags for each product this can be these tags can be regarded as um, as uh, uh, our attributes um actually uh, we have uh, we are collaborating with some uh, online video recommendation uh, company like quite and the tiktok um they they have a team that assign tags to the videos and we use that tags uh, as our attributes right okay so uh, th this is a uh, this is a uh, uh, answer for the first question but uh, yeah yeah obviously if we do not if we do not have predefined attributes we can uh, use some latent factor but um, in order to make it interpretable uh, or, or explainable uh, because we are we are a conversation scenario right so we need to converse with the user so we uh, some works try to decode directly decode the natural language uh, as an explanation or as a question, but uh, uh, in, in that part, uh, it is not that stable, right? So yeah, so I mean, I mean, the techniques are uh, that uh, directly, direct, directly decoding the attributes or decoding the question are not mature. So yeah, it's under uh, further exploration. Thank you. Okay, this is this is the answer for the for the first question. Yep. So, uh, as for the second question, pardon. So, uh, could could you please remind me the the, the second question? So uh, that was about uh, which which of these uh, attributes to select to ask a question about, right? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, um, actually, actually, um, uh, in in our tutorial, we have um, let's see. Uh, let uh, please uh, allow me. Uh, share my screen. Uh, I I can use the slides to remind to remind some of the. Okay, so can you see the screen? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, so there are many methods to rank them. For example, uh, yeah, yeah. For these two, for this first two, latent factor method and the Bayesian preference elicitation. The, we just randomly rank. We just randomly select uh, the the item to uh, ask right. But for the attributes, uh, here we just predict. Uh, here we have a sequential predicting model right. So we just uh, directly take the output of the um, of the LSTM sequential prediction model to uh, to display to the user. Okay. Then for this one, for the uh, uncertainty driven method, uh, we here we calculate the score as right, the uncertainty score. So we choose uh, an attribute with the largest uh, uncertainty. Okay. For this one, for this one, uh, yeah, uh, we have a, a lot of methods. For example, we can randomly select or we can select by the confidence. Here you can see uh, this this SIJ, uh, each attribute is associated with one dimension, right? The score that the model predicted are uh, indicate, uh, can be act as a indicator of the confidence, right? So we can select the one with the largest value uh, to ask. Okay. okay. So uh, I guess if I can summarize this, Wen Jiang, um, the two types of approach. One is uh, uh, an approach that uh, is um, centered on what would help the recommender most. So if it is very uncertain, then try to uh, select the attributes that would give, if you get a, a response to that for the user, the, the most, the biggest increase in certainty. Yes. Um, and so some of the approaches here are like that. The other takes a much more user-centered focus, namely, uh, what do we know about uh, uh, for instance, popularity of an attribute, uh, color, uh, or a particular type of color, or uh, shape, uh, and so that could be uh, sort of generic, the whole population, or it could be for a segment of the population. Uh, yeah, for, for these users, this is typically something that they care about. And how do you know this? Well, from past, uh, from past behavior. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, and. Thank you, uh, Wen Jiang, for uh, your answers. Any more questions? Okay. 
So we'll, we'll try and uh, allocate, a, uh, we'll try and reserve a bit of time towards the end for more questions. Uh, Chong Min is online ask, uh, answering questions on the chat. Right now we're going to go to uh, 2.3, natural language understanding and generation, and then the screen is yours again, uh, Wen Chang. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, let's come to the 2.3, natural language understanding and generation. This is the third uh, important challenge so that we have identified. Okay, so um, in the previous two uh, important challenges, actually we we do not uh, we do not require the model to be uh, or do not require the system to be running built as a dialogue system, right? So it can have some click feedback. I recall that in the introduction we have seen that the conversational recommendation system has two types of uh, have has two forms. One is one is running build the dialogue system. One is running build the conversational recommendation as a dialogue system, right? So people can speak or can type uh, what are their utterance to the system and chat with the uh, system. Uh, to get uh, feedback. And another one is that we use click as a feedback, right? So the system uh, displays something to the user, display the item attribute to the user and uh, ask them to click to choose what they want or what, what they don't want. Okay, so uh, in the 2.1 and 2.2, we are doing the, uh, 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 Almost all the uh, uh, sorry, mo most of the works in 2.1, 2.2 does not require the model to be built as a dialogue system. But uh, in 2.3, uh, 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 efforts try to build the conversational recommendation system as a dialogue system, as a type of dialogue systems. So many uh, people from natural language processing community uh, focus more on this topic. So since we are, yeah, since, since people want to build it, build a, a conversational recommendation system as, um, as a, a task, as a dialogue system, especially a task oriented dialogue system. So we need uh, to, yeah, uh, we need to uh, start from a task oriented dialogue system. We let's let's revisit the typical uh, structure of task oriented dialogue system. Uh, in the typical dialogue, uh, dialogue uh, task oriented dialogue system, uh, it contains four components. It is a yeah pipeline consists of four components. Let's say the upper the, the upper part of the slide. So it contains. Uh, the components of natural language understanding components, uh, dialogue staging, dialogue state tracking components, dialogue policy components, and the natural language generation components. So here, if the user say, I want to find the Chinese restaurant, then natural language understanding components translate uh, its, uh, uh, the natural language utterance to be a formal language representation like informal cursion is equal to Chinese. And then, the, the, and then it's, uh, uh, this formal language is uh, taken by direct state tracking to uh, integrate all the information in the past, uh, in, in, in the past utterance of this session, and then it's in uh, and and then it um, the system uh, interacts with the knowledge base, and uh, after gets after gets result from the knowledge base. For example, if the user say he want to find a Chinese restaurant, then the system will interact. Uh, uh, once the system know uh, the he wants uh, a user wants uh, Chinese food. Then it will interact. The system will interact with the knowledge base to find the results, uh, to find all the information about Chinese restaurants, and then and it uh, gets the, the 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 results of knowledge base. Uh, then uh, then there is a policy uh, policy uh, component to decide what to do next. Uh, for example, uh, the current direct policy uh, network uh, decides um, decide the the the. the it need to request a location. Then the last component, which is natural language generation components, translates the, the formal language request a location to the natural language, what do you want to eat? Or where do you want to eat? That because it requires location. Okay, so this is, uh, so th this is uh, a traditional typical pipeline structure for task frontier dialogue system. And uh, since uh, the, the development of um, uh, uh, so neural networks 
uh, end-to-end structure becomes more and more popular. So uh, there is also uh, exploration try to build a uh, task oriented dialogue system using one end-to-end structure. Let's say the unit, uh, the typical structure is um, demonstrated in the bottom of the slide. First, it has an encoder uh, to encode the natural language or the, the, the context. Uh, the user input and the context as um, latent variables and use this variable directly interact with the knowledge base. Then, based on the interaction with the knowledge base and the latent variables, and the, 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 the system will directly decode the generated response. Okay, these are two typical structures for task oriented dialogue systems. Actually, conversational. Uh, uh, the, the people who want to build a conversational recommendation system as a subtype of dialogue system uh, are follows follows the these two typical structures. Let's take a look at them. Okay, so let's see. Um, uh, let let's see an example of the the pipeline uh, pipeline structured. Uh, conversational recommendation system. So let's say they have a dialogue history, uh, context, and a user input, and then they take this um, dialogue context into a natural language understanding components, and it gets the attributes, it extracts the attributes the user care about, and then it predicts the user intention. What, what, what does the user want? And then here we have a, a recommendation component so which takes uh, the natural language understanding components to as an input to make the recommendation. Then the three parts, the attributes, prediction, um, the attributes and the intent and the recommendation system results are feed into a policy network and, and then choose uh, action and then generate a response. Uh, generate or select the response, uh, no, no matter uh, what the natural language generation components uh, are implemented. Okay, so yeah, this, this exactly follows the pipeline structure of task oriented dialogue systems. Uh, they just, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the new part is that it, it attracts attributes and it is embedded in recommendation systems. Okay, but uh, more research interests uh, focus on end-to-end -end structure of conversational recommendation system, uh, natural language understanding and generation. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see this work. This work published on on New uh, eighteen. Uh, yeah, it has four components. Let's say first, it has a hierarchical encoder. Uh, yeah, yeah. Here in the in the left bottom part of the slide. Yeah, I saw at one, two, three last week. At, at one, two, three is a placeholder indicating uh, an, an item, right? So if the user, so, uh, so this, this encoder is to encode the direct context and the user input. And then it passed to a sentiment analysis here. So here, uh, so yeah, here sentiment, uh, sentiment, ana sentiment analysis part. So analyze users' uh, interests uh, or the preference on the item and attributes. Then this sentiment analysis results is fit into a recommendation system. For example, the user mentions at one, two, three uh, with some uh, sentiment of like or dislike, prefer or not prefer. And then uh, with, um, with all this information, it will make a recommendation. Then once the recommendation results is obtained, then it's go, it's fitted, uh, the results are are the results are fed into a decoder. This decoder is a switch decoder. The switch decoder means it takes multiple resources of input. For example, it takes a, 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 a recommendation as a result, uh, and uh, also the input, the, 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 the input encoder. Take this two source of information here, this two source of information as an input to decode the eventual natural language generation, uh, to decode uh, the eventual utterance uh, uh, as a response. Okay, 
uh, yeah, this is uh, this is very straightforward. Right um, here, uh, the later paper argues uh, two shortage of this structure. First is that uh, um, this redial. Uh, yeah, I, I mean the, the 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 method that we introduced just now is called redial model. The redial model only mention item. Uh, uh, one advantage, uh, one disadvantage is that uh, only mentioned items are used for recommend recommender systems. Other information but also helps. For example, um, in the in the redial system, it only cares about the sentiment towards the the items. It does not explicitly model attributes. For example, this word, this sentence, "Lord of the Ring." Uh, this is a item, uh, because this is a movie, right? The 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 redial uh, model is for movie recommendation. So the Lord of the Ring uh, is item. Is really all my time favorite. In fact, I love all J.R.R. Tolkien's work. Okay, Tolkien here is an attribute. It is author of the Law of the Ring. Uh, not uh, okay. Yeah. So the so so here here um Chen at all uh, in this work in this uh, work published on EMLP um argue that not only the Lord of the Ring, which is the item, matters, but also the attributes also matters. Uh, uh, they need to properly model the attributes. Okay, the second the shortage that Chen et al. at this work uh, argue is that the recom uh, the the redial model, the older re redial model, cannot use the recommendation results to generate better dialogue. For example, if the recommendation recommendation system recommend a lot of the king, uh, they are associated. Uh, it, 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 it is uh, the, the 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 entity lot of the king is associated with a lot of informations. For example, epic, sword, imaginative, Oscar-winning fantasy. All these words can be used uh, to generate a diverse uh, response. But uh, in the old structure, uh, it cannot. The old structure redial model cannot do that. Okay. To overcome this two uh, shortage, they introduce a notch graph uh, to help with it. Let's see how they do. So, so here uh, in the left part of the of the slide, uh, we have um, have another demonstration of the redial model. Uh, here, this model, the here this model, the 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 the, the old model, the baseline model, right? Uh, here, this uh, the redial model. First, I take the dialogue history in, and the uh, model is using sequence, sequence model, and then, then uh, it extracts the mentioned entities for the recommender system, and then they use a switch uh, network to decode the eventual response. This is what the redial model is doing. But uh, to overcome the problem, uh, I mentioned just uh, now, uh, the authors introduce a notch graph here. Uh, this is demonstrated in the right part of the slide. Uh, this notch graph uh, serves two uh, functions. First, uh, they use uh, uh, the the notch graph can help the recommendation. Second, the notch graph can recall more information related to the items. This in, this related information can be used to generate the response. For, uh, let's see how the how the how the authors. Implement this. First, uh, here we have a uh, we have a dialogue history, right? Then we put it into uh, entity linking um, components that links uh, the items uh, mentioned in the uh, of the north graph in the dialogue history, and then based on the linked entities, we can perform a graph based recommendation, and then then. Uh, once we get the recommendation result from the graph, then we tell go back to tell the model uh, the recommended item as well as the information associated with the recommended um, uh, item. Then with this information, with this rich information, 
then the sequence to sequence model can generate more diverse response. Here, uh, here then it generates a response. Obviously, uh, we uh, we have um, we have uh, recommended results from the knowledge graph here. P rec. Then we are uh, following the the, the 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 future work of following the the existing work. They use a switch network to integrate uh, the direct outputs and direct system output and the recommendation output uh, to generate the final response. Uh, okay. The, um, okay, the there is a further improvement improvement over this line. Uh, some uh, a group of authors um, further believe that using only one knowledge graph is not enough. Yeah, for example, the previous one only use um, the previous work only use dbpedia. But uh, each knowledge graph has its own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, what if we can integrate multiple uh, knowledge graph to further enrich the recommendation and uh, the dialogue response generation, right? So let's say we have a dialogue context. Here we have dialogue context. And then uh, we do the entity linking. We link the items uh, in the DBpedia uh in the dbpedia and uh, links the word in the concept net okay the author choose choose to integrate the two uh knowledge graph one is dbpedia and uh, another is concept net okay they do the edit linking here and then they uh get the embedding of linked the entity how do they get the embedding they just uh, use uh, they just uh, train this embedding from the knowledge graph Right, so in for the DBpedia, they, they get the embedding of all the nodes uh, using some uh, common um, uh, graph, uh, GCN graph convolutional neural networks, right? Mm, for the concept net, uh, again, they use some GCN to get the embedding in the uh, concept net. Okay, for the uh, linked entity in the respective uh, knowledge graph, then they have a set of embeddings. Right, this uh, set of, so the NC, the NC here is embedding from the DBpedia, from the item of DBpedia. The, they have uh, they have rich information from the DBpedia. Then the VC are the set of embedding that is from concept net. It has the rich information of VC of, of concept net. Then the author try try to use mutual information maximization mechanism here mim mean mutual information maximization uh this mim method tried to uh, optimize the mutual information between the nc and the vc this is to enhance the nc with the uh, information of, of vc and enhance the information of vc with nc right so the 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 this is to uh, leverage the mutual effect, uh, or fuse the information of DBpedia and the concept net. Okay, then after the MIM layer, the the this NC and the VC are integrated as a user embedding, uh, for the recommendation. Okay, then there is another branch here. We they use VC to help the dialogue response generation uh, to help generate uh, a more uh, a, a richer uh, words, richer wordings and uh, richer entity informations. Uh, you can you can see there are two tasks. One is multitask loss function, and another is uh, another is dialogue response generation loss. They use a uh, multitask loss. Uh, one is a recommend, uh, one is recommendation loss, one is natural language generation loss. They use multitask loss function to joint optimize these two tasks. Uh, but let's see something interesting. So in the past, we have introduced uh, four works that try to use end-to-end -end model for the uh, natural language understanding and the generation. But uh, author, uh, yeah, 
uh, this work is published on on, on Rexis, uh, the, the the current Rexis, um, uh, because uh, per perhaps the author haven't got the time, uh, got the chance to pre to present it. Uh, you you will see the the the, the formal formal presentation in uh, in tomorrow or yeah or 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 sometime later. But um, we yeah preliminary intro uh, introduced the work the ideas. Um, some all some scientists want to reflect whether the end to end natural natural language understanding and generation model really works. Learning gets the improvement, so they recruit uh, a lot of human users to chat with the system to 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 evaluate the uh, outputs of the system so let's see how, how they evaluate it they just um, input the dialogue history that yeah, the dialogue history is a, a chatting a chatting uh, chatting history between user and the chatbot and input the context and ask ask the chatbot to generate the results and um it asks the text uh, chatbot to generate three results and ask users to manually read the results from one to five. And uh, it, the authors compare three uh, models. One is here, this one, the, the, the first end-to-end -end model that uh, we have been introduced. Uh, second is KBRD, the, the, the next uh, model that we introduced. And the third model is a retrieval based model, not generation based, but retrieval based model. But you can see the results here. There is, yeah, there is uh, no, not that difference, right? Uh, and uh, and um, the retrieval based model even get higher performance, get higher score, and the lower standard derivation. Yeah, this is very interesting. That's uh, this this indicates that perhaps the the the, the retrieval based method gets better performance, is stronger, right? So so we have a lot of effort. So 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 what's the point of um, building the end to end uh, end to end generation model? So yeah yeah th th this is uh, one of the reflection. Yeah, we appreciate such type of re, uh, reflection work. Okay, so yeah, along with this line, we find another reflection. Uh, the, the author, uh, yeah, in last year, Rex's uh, workshop, a group of author um, want to discuss whether the end-to-end -end learning uh, network uh, has strong capability. Do they still have a long way to go? Yeah. After uh, then they conducted uh, uh, several state of the uh, of the arts end to end baseline, and uh, they have three observations. First, they find that for each system, about one third of the system utterance are not meaningful in the given context, and would probably lead to a breakdown of the conversation in human evaluation. Okay. The second observation is that less than two thirds of the recommendations were considered to be meaningful in a human evaluation. The third observation is that neither of the two systems are generated utterance. Almost all systems uh, response are already presented in the training data. This, this means the, the, the system does not really create the response, but just mimic the response in the training sets. Okay, they draw the conclusion that there might be a long way to go to build an end-to-end -end natural language understanding gen and generation-based uh, conversational recommendation system, but it is still worth trying since the natural language are flexible and nat natural for users. Okay, this is also an interesting reflection. Uh, okay. Um, we, uh, I should uh, pause here and uh, pass, uh, pass the screen to Martin.
So he will introduce the trade-offs between the exploration and exploitation. This is also an important challenge uh, for uh, task uh, for, for conversational recommendation system. Okay, Martin. Thank you, Wenchang. Um, okay. can, we, can we switch to uh, this laptop, please? Mm. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, so what I'll try to do is uh, speed up a little bit so that we have enough time both for 2.5 evaluation and user simulation and for um, uh, discussions of future directions and, and some Q&A towards the end. Right, uh, before this, uh, there's a commercial break. break. Um, we have a tenure track position in information retrieval broadly conceived, could be uh, search, recommendation, conversational recommender systems. Um, IR, br very broadly conceived. The deadline is in uh, just uh, two days. Um, here's the URL. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't think, just act, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the tutorial. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned at the start, and also as uh, Wen Chang mentioned repeatedly uh, when talking uh, about uh, more in particular about actions that a system has to take is a, one has to make trade-offs between uh, you know, just doing again what has proved to be valuable in the past uh, or uh, trying new things because uh, that might be even better and you might discover new things about your own actions and about the preferences of, of users that you're uh, trying to help make decisions. Now, a very what we'll do is uh, very briefly remind you of um, uh, so-called bandits. Then we'll thus discuss uh, three papers that we think, and there are many in this space of bandit-based methods for conversational recommendation, but these three papers are uh, influential. I think they're also good starting points if you want to explore this space. Right, bandits. So as most of you will probably know, the, those band the, 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 the thinking about making choices in terms of bandits comes from um, this example uh, here. Uh, you're gambling, you need to make a choice which uh, arm to pull. The only thing you see is uh, the mean of the, of the outcomes um, and the uncertainty of each arm. And based on that, you, you, try, you should uh, select your next arm to pull. Um, uh, something that you'll be trying to uh, optimize is your cumulative reward for your whole uh, gambling session. Um, and that uh, is often phrased in uh, terms of uh, regret. You're trying to minimize your regret. So uh, that's the difference between what theoretically you could have achieved and what in practice you actually achieved. Um, so this is a, the, the, the fundamental trade-off that one has to deal with there. Uh, take advantage of the best option that is known to you um, or try something new uh, about unknown options. Uh, there are various ideas of uh, combining these two. Uh, just always exploit, that's one extreme. Uh, never uh, exploit, so just uh, randomly take, uh, take an action. Um, somehow greedily, uh, uh, sorry, absolute greedy, so combining greedy and random with uh, so, some, some, uh, some weight, um, or only explore uh, to combat uh, uncertainty. Now, given the amount of time, we have slides with a bit too much detail, uh, so I'll, I'll skip over some of them. What's important here is as we go through richer and richer proposals to uh, address this problem of balancing exploitation and exploration. There's two or three important things you should pick up. Uh, first, uh, this, uh, there's this idea of optimism, uh, namely, uh, if you think you can uh, get a good reward with a certain option, go execute that reward, be optimistic. 
that's, a, that's an underlying intuition behind many of these methods. Second, uh, don't just look at the rewards and um, uh, what you've received uh, in terms of rewards in the past. Also look at features of the context, and the context could be the user, the product, a task. Uh, in this case, where our actions are not just recommending something, but also asking something, features could also be features related to uh, the questions we ask, the attributes we ask questions about. Um, so that's what you'll see in these papers. Uh, first, reward only, then bringing more notions of context uh, into it. And then what you'll also see in, in many of these papers is uh, a, a reasonably sharp distinction between preparing to take actions offline without interactions yet, and then once you've done that, you move online, you begin to take actions. Um, so we'll, we'll show you uh, three papers, but before that, let me uh, share another bit, uh, two slides about uh, more generic bandit methods. So one is uh, this one here, upper confidence bound. Uh, that's a very basic method uh, from the bandit literature. You select arms, so an arm is a, is an, uh, is a choice. Uh, an arm uh, could be a thing to recommend, or it could be um, a question to ask, or an attribute to ask a question about. So think of arms as choices. Uh, so what arm are you going to select? Well, the one that maximizes the reward um, and minimizes uh, the uncertainty. And there's enough theory around to help you uh, make that choice. Uh, in Dub Dub Dub, uh, now 11 years ago already, uh, was a really interesting uh, extension of uh, this UCB where uh, it's not just about rewards but bringing in context, so features of, and this was in a, if I remember correctly, a news uh, recommendation setting, um, bringing in features of the context, user features but also news features. Um, and the, those news features, of course, could be genres, uh, but it could also be uh, entities. Um, and then what you see is the, the, the equation at the bottom. I'm not going to walk you through it, but you, you'll, you'll see the same basic scheme. Uh, you, know, you have a reward, and there's, there's also a term for exploration. Those terms uh, get more and more complex as we bring in more and more uh, notions of context. In the, in the survey, uh, we list uh, a few dozen papers uh, in this space, many of them originally more in the interactive recommendation setting, uh, but uh, over the past few years, we, we've also seen a few in the uh, conversational recommendation setting. Um, and you'll, you'll see this development uh, first uh, generic reward based only methods and then looking at the top of the table here uh, bring in more and more context uh, bring in more and more additional constraints uh, diversity uh, making use of uh, positive feedback as well as negative feedback uh, making use of uh, social information so a social network around users uh, making use of both online and offline uh, interaction data, um, modeling dependencies between choices. Right? Often we assume that the choices are independent. If you assume that they are dependent or at some level of dependency, then the, um, the modeling becomes more complex. There are examples of that. Uh, and then uh, towards the bottom here, uh, the application of these methods in the conversational setting. So three papers then, uh, starting with this one from KDD 2016 uh, by Krista Kopoulou uh, and, uh, and co-authors. So what's the setting? We have a, uh, we use a multi-armed bandit algorithm, so uh, multiple choices with context. Uh, we're in an interactive uh, environment 
The, the picture on the right-hand side here, I think, is, uh, is worth remembering. Initialize offline, and then continue to learn once you've moved online. Continue to learn from the feedback uh, that uh, users give you. And so uh, the advantage of this setup is uh, you can uh, continue to modify the parameters as you go along. Uh, you can cater for uh, changes in preferences of users. Um, you can also explore diversity. Uh, you can also offer uh, stuff to users that they may never have seen before. Now what, I know this is a, a very full slide, don't uh, try to um, grasp all the details. Uh, what's important to, to take home here is this uh, green plus orange uh, equation at the top. Traditional recommender, offline. Uh, a banded method online. And for this banded method, the authors of this uh, paper by uh, Krista Kopulo and, and others, uh, they, they can consider lots of uh, standard uh, banded strategies. Their main in innovation is not so much to come with a new banded strategy. Their main innovation is to take these ideas, put them to work in a recommendation setting and, and do uh, contrastive experiments. And importantly, come with a really interesting way of um, doing offline uh, initialization and then online updating. And that's on the next slide. Um, you, you're free to take photos, of course, of these slides. Uh, we're also uh, sharing these slides, so um, there's no need. Unless, of course, the lighting is very special here, and then, of course, go ahead and do it. Um, and so, uh, what, what, what these authors do uh, is uh, offline initialization, online updating. In their offline stage, they have um, a small number of users interacting with uh, a relatively small number of items. They, they sample uh, preferences. And then in the online stage, they, in the synthetic setting, they um, uh, learn uh, well, in a synthetic segment, so they have a, a small number of restaurants, a small number of users, uh, restaurants of certain types, uh, users with certain preferences of um, spicy food and, 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 and affordable food, etc. And then uh, they also have the online updating stage, and the online updating stage is where you know it, it, it gets real. Uh, in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, a few thousand users, uh, hundreds of restaurants, uh, thousands of observations. Uh, and so I think it's, a, it's an inspiring paper for the methodology and for the specific use case um, that they uh, work out in a great amount of detail. So I would encourage you to, to go in and check that paper out. So what they find, the, the, the most important take-home message is uh, this offline stage helps to further improve the performance of the, of the recommender. Uh, the offline initialization uh, stage, um, it's important to take that seriously as well. You, you want to start with something sensible before you go and confront your users. Um, they do uh, quite a few um, contrastive experiments between different banded methods for the online uh, phase. Um, some of the differences are small, uh, but it's good to know what exactly uh, works and what, what doesn't seem to work. Now, taking this a step further is a, a paper uh, published at WWW last year, and that is a paper, the idea is very intuitive. Uh, the math is uh, probably a bit too too complex to, to discuss here. What's the intuitive idea? Well, also think of these uh, attributes or these, these things you want to ask about as actions. And so that's an, you have a sort of a hybrid arms. An arm could be an item to recommend, an arm could also be um, a question to ask about, or a topic to ask about, a category to ask about. And then of course what you would need to do is, uh, in, in your modeling, 
try to understand and figure out how feedback, how re what the reward is for the terms, for the questions, and how the reward for questions and reward for items uh, connect. Um, it's again a contextual method, meaning that uh, it's not just about rewards, but it's also about features, features of items, features of, of, uh, of the questions. And so this is at a very high level of the schema, which looks uh, you know, simple enough, right? Um, you have a bunch of arms, items, or, or terms to ask about. Um, you observe a contextual vector for each arm, items and terms. If um, they have this function that decides whether it's a good time to ask a question or not, if it's a good time to ask a question, you, you go ahead and uh, you select uh, key terms, so uh, topics to ask questions about, uh, and then you uh, get feedback, and then uh, you select uh, an arm, uh, with a familiar equation, right, uh, combining exploitation and exploration, you collect a reward, you update the model. Simple enough. Uh, the underlying math is uh, f fairly hairy. Um, so I'll just race through this uh, in the interest of time. Uh, I'll stop here for a, a brief second. Uh, not for the details, but for the, uh, the, the points in orange on the left. So how do you evaluate uh, these setups? We'll have uh, about 15 to 20 minutes about evaluation uh, shortly, but and simulation uh, is gonna be a key feature in, in evaluation there, but it's also a key feature here, right? You, if you want to see what, uh, and try and understand what an action would um, would do with a user, well, that's a risky discovery process. Uh, maybe there's some actions you would never like to take in reality. Um, there are some questions probably that you would never like to ask in reality. Um, and so what these authors do, um, again, a WW 2020 paper, is uh, they, they come up with a, a synthetic or maybe better a semi-synthetic uh, setup uh, for the different choices, items, key terms, uh, a semi-synthetic uh, setup for uh, what user preferences are and what the rewards are. Um, and of course you can uh, debate all of these choices. It's a model and you can debate about every model, right? Uh, the degree to which it reflects reality and real users and real items uh, or not. But I think it's a, it's a great example and an inspiring example of how you might go about uh, coming up with complex models here and coming up with ways of evaluating them. Uh, so let's move ahead. Uh, there's one more. Uh, model that I'd like to mention here. This was published uh, in TOYS, Transaction on Information Systems, uh, I think just uh, one or two months ago. Um, the, what's the point here? Again, this idea that uh, your choices, your actions can be very hybrid. Uh, items, questions, attributes. Uh, so Let's walk through this diagram on the left. So we start at the top. Um, we, have, uh, we sample from uh, the user embeddings. Uh, and then we need to do something. We need to choose an arm to play. We need to take an action. Uh, and that could be asking a question, asking multiple questions, uh, making a recommendation. Uh, and the model in this paper, the model decides what to do when. Uh, whether to ask more questions, uh, whether to move to, to making recommendations. Uh, I think it's a, a, another nice illustration of, of this idea of, um, um, well, like the, the previous paper, of having very complex and, and diverse uh, types of actions. 
Uh, and again, you'll have questions uh, that you need to answer about uh, you know, modeling rewards, modeling preferences for items, modeling preferences for, for colors, uh, sorry, for attributes. And for instance, in, in a fashion domain, uh, you would probably find that um, color is a, is a key attribute to ask questions about. Right, sorry, this was fast uh, for the uh, exploration and exploitation. So the take homes are uh, be optimistic. If you think you can get a reward, go run for it. Uh, don't just look at the rewards, also look at the context, features of, of, of users, of items, of, uh, of questions to ask. Uh, the, the first model that we showed by uh, Krista Kopolu et al. really had these as separate actions to take, uh, recommend, ask. The, the two later models actually blended them and just had a complex and diverse set of actions uh, and then proposed models for those. Right. We're going to move across the planet again now uh, to Chongming and hopefully all of this works. Okay. There you are. Great. Uh, then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Works fine. The screen is okay, yours. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Can you see my slide? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me give a brief introduction to myself. Uh, I'm Chong Ming Gao at USTC, University of Science and Technology of China. So. We finally come to the last part, part of our tutorial. Uh, I will introduce you the last part of our five important challenges, the evaluation and the user simulation problem. Okay, uh, though it's the last part, it's also important. As we can see, this part is through all the three modules. So uh, evaluation is very important since we can only improve and optimize our model when we know how good our model is, right? So let's begin. Uh, let's first look at the synopsis of this part. In CRS and uh, interactive recommendation, we just want to uh, know about two, two kinds of uh, evaluation methods that is related to the uh, turn level evaluation and the conversation level evaluation. In turn level evaluation, we just want to know about the question about how good is the recommendation in, in a single turn and how good is the response generation in a single turn. And uh, in the conversation level evaluation, we are, uh, we, I will uh, introduce you the technology of online test, also known as A-B test and the off policy evaluation technology. And at last, at last, I will introduce the technology of user simulation. So uh, let's explain them one by one. Uh, first, let's, let's look at the metrics of those two kinds of evaluation. Uh, I assume that we are familiar with those metrics as the audience of Rexis. Um, for the metrics to evaluate recommendation, we have our MSE, MSE, et cetera. And uh, we have the uh, uh, matrix blow and the rouge for evaluating the dialogue generation. Okay, um, so the, the, those metrics are, um, are proposed to evaluate the single, single performance of the uh, result of the CRS. And for, uh, for evaluating the long-term performance, we, we are, um, curious about the indicator that can reflect the performance of the global performance of our CRS, uh, such as the uh, average turn and the success rate at case turn. Yeah, those are the uh, commonly used metrics in CRS. Uh, okay, let's take a deeper look at those metrics. First, um, uh, in turn level evaluation, we always assume that we know the ground truth answer in advanced. So uh, there are basically two kinds of metrics here. The first is rating based metrics and the second is 
The second one is ranking-based metrics. In ranking, in grading-based metrics, we are caring about the uh, whether uh, whether the predicted answer is close to the true answer. So, uh, so we are measuring the difference between the two values. Uh, in ranking-based metrics, instead of caring about the uh, the difference between the exact value of two uh, of exact value of two values, we are caring about um, the ranks or the order. Uh, we are caring about whether the algorithm can rank the item proportional to their relevance. Yeah, uh, I assume you are familiar with those metrics. Um, but there are some problem in the, this kind of evaluation. As a, a, a paper published at KDD20 has pointed out, actually is the best, best paper of KDD20. Um, the Critchy and Randall has printed out some study only sample a small set of your relevant items, that is negative items, and calculate the ranking metrics on the small set. That could be problematic because measuring the result on the sampling set could be inconsistent with the true ranking results. Uh, so their suggestion is to avoid sampling when you're measuring the, evaluate, uh, measuring the performance of your system. Uh, for more details, you can check the, uh, their pa or original paper list here. Okay, um, let's come to the evaluation of response generation. Uh, there are two commonly used metrics here, uh, blow and uh, rush. Yeah, uh, the two metrics are also similar to the, the uh, metrics in recommendation that is similar to precision and record in recommendation. So uh, it's also easy to understand. We just replace the item in recommendation to the words, to the words in dialogue generation, okay. Uh, but there are always some problem in this kind of uh, evaluation. Uh, the problem is here, uh, it's widely debated whether those metrics are suitable for evaluating language generation. Uh, because those metrics are sensitive to lexical variation, uh, they cannot, they cannot appropriate, uh, they cannot access the semantic and the syntactic variation of words. For example, good and great are two different words. We all know that they have the similar meaning, but a machine can, if the machine cannot recognize a similar meaning in them, uh, there, there could be some failure or some problem in evaluation. Okay. Uh, just recall, our goal is not to predict the response with highest probability, but rather the long-term success of the dialogue. So uh, we are, uh, so a lot of researcher has come up with some metrics uh, to evaluate the performance related uh, in terms of influency, consistency, et cetera. Okay, you can check this paper for more details. Mm. Let's look at the common problem in turn level evaluation. The common problem is uh, we, in turn level evaluation, we assume that CRS know the answer in advance, but CRS is not a supervised learning task. So the answer is not knowing and should be not knowing in, in advance. And plus the interaction process is not IID, but rely on historical action and user feedback. Okay, so, uh, Considering th those problem, our solution is to use a conversation level evaluation. The conversation level evaluation is to uh, evaluate our model for uh, to see if it can uh, it can capture its long term success. So there are some metrics such as average turn success rate at the teeth turn. Uh, uh, those metrics are intuitive to understand, and uh, the cumulative rewards here uh, is a common, is a common, common uh, quantity used in reinforcement learning. Uh, I will not go into the detail of this, of this 
uh, of this equation because we are well, we have limited time. So uh, let's look at the mechanism of the uh, uh, conversation level evaluation. We use this equation uh, in the online user test. We calculate this quantity and we improve our model using this. But the problem is uh, it's not practical in reality because this kind of this kind of manner is too slow and inefficient because uh, the interaction between human and the CRS is very slow. And another, another important problem is it could hurt user experience as mm, we don't have an optimal or per perfect CRS at the beginning. So uh, we could hurt user experience. Um, considering this problem, our solution is to use conversation uh, to use of policy evaluation, also known as counterfactual evaluation. Uh, okay, um, the pro the problem we caring about is what would happen. What would have happened if instead of pi beta we would have used the pi theta? So we just add a weight to counterfact or to uh, offset a weight that. Um, that is intro, uh, uh, to counterfeit the bias that is introduced in our uh, model. So instead of sampling the trajectory from the current policy pi theta, we just sampling the, sampling the trajectory from the behavior policy pi beta. Okay, that's the difference between the two one. Uh, yeah, has been highlighted by the blue block. Okay, so uh, in online test, we just repeat this procedure by uh, drawing, drawing data and evaluating our policy and updating our current policy to the next policy. And the difference here is uh, we only draw data from the historical policy and use these, those data to evaluate our uh, current policy and update our policy. So we can parallelize this procedure. So advantage of, of policy evaluation is that we, uh, it's very efficient because we can use a uh, historical data to evaluate current policy and it's also unbiased. But the problem here is that we can introduce a variance. Uh, this problem can be, can be solved by introducing the technology such as weight clipping and the trusted region policy optimization, you can check our uh, survey paper for more detail. Um, and I, I just want to mention this kind of problem is very hard uh, recently. So uh, 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 even uh, another tutorial conducted tomorrow would focus on this topic. You can attend the tutorial uh, hold on uh, tomorrow, okay. Uh, so we are introduce a simulation. Why simulation is a good solution? Because it can overcome the problems existing in the online evaluation and of policy evaluation. That is uh, very slow, expensive, and action space is too large. Okay, so uh, we use our simulated user to replace the user, to replace the real user for in the interaction. So uh, we can train our CRS using the simulated user. Uh, there are basically four kinds of a user simulation strategy. Uh, we summarize the four kinds of strategy. Uh, the first is using direct interaction history of users. And the second, uh, the first one is just like the static recommendation. We use what we have as positive samples. So the disadvantage is very sparse. The data is very sparse. And the second one, uh, improve the first strategy by estimating user preference in advance. So we can uh, fill, fill out those missing data and, and uh, use those uh, estimating value to evaluate our CRS. So the disadvantage is, is we can uh, we might introduce estimating error in this process. Uh, 
And the third and the fourth strategy is related to dialogue system driven CRS. Um, uh, where we extract some information from the dialogue data, such as user reviews or the conversational corporal, uh, so we can uh, we can get advantage of those additional data. So the disadvantage of those two strategy is uh, uh, we it's hard to distinguish user sentiment in those corporal uh, because the machine cannot cannot understand human sentiment and common sense, uh, and it's non-transparent and hard to interpret. So that's a disadvantage. Okay. Um, uh, those are the four summarized strategies, but I, I don't have time to talk about them one by one, so I will skip them. If you, if you are interested, you can check out our uh, survey paper for details. Uh, it's a concrete work for sim uh, user simulation. The, uh, the, the author in uh, published the paper at KDD20 has uh, come up with a stack-like simulation strategy. And uh, each time the simulator user update its, um, uh, this is called agenda, update its agenda by either push or pull an operation into this agenda, stake, stake-like agenda. So uh, the simulated user use this kind of strategy can um, convert, can have a conversation with CRS. So we can train the CRS using this kind of a simulation. Okay, mm, you can check this paper for details. Uh, at last, uh, we also have some data sets. I'm not going to talk about the detail of those data sets uh, because uh, you know time is limited. Uh, simulation, simul well, basically two kinds of data. The first is, is constructed, constructed by the recommendation data. Well, we don't have the dialogue, the dialogue data. And the second is with dialogue data. Uh, if you are, you want to build your CRS using those one of those uh, data, you can check our survey paper for the uh, detail of those data sets. Okay, uh, I, I think because the time is very limited, so I have to give the control to my partner, uh, Wen Qiang, to summarize our uh, this tutorial. Thank you. Hello, Wen Qiang, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, let, okay, let, me, let me stop so, my yeah, share. Yeah. Stop share, okay. Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, so it's time for me. Oh, sorry, uh, let me, sorry. Uh, a minute. Let me find. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is everything fine? If everything is fine, uh, I will continue. Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, it's time to it's time for uh conclusion and um, it's uh yeah yeah it's time for conclusion. So we will uh discuss future uh promising directions as a conclusion for our tutorial. So here we summarize several directions. Uh, yeah. So yeah, first direction is that um. Is it possible to join to optimize three tasks? For example, we have uh, uh, we have three components, as right? so the user interface, a conversational strategy module, and a recommender engine module. Okay, all these three engines are how to say. Um, some works focus on a user interface, and some works uh, focus on conversational strategy, and some works focus on recommender engine. Is it possible to join to optimize the three? to make a whole conversational recommendation system. Yeah, this is ambitious picture, but uh, yeah, it's, but uh, yeah, 
I, I, I believe this is the future uh, to do it. Uh, perhaps it will take a longer time, but eventually we will be there. Okay, this is the first direction. The second direction is the bias and the debias in CRS. So, you know, so a recent trend for study conversation uh, for uh, for studying uh, that uh, recommendation system, not conversational recommendation system, uh, is uh, is a bias and a debias. You know, we have a lot of bias uh, like a selection bias, a conformity bias, exposure bias, causation bias, a lot of biases in the recommendation. So, uh. So the, the, the for the conversational recommendation, the bias problem uh, will, would be more severe. Yeah, it is because the conversational recommendation is a multi-turn, is a multi-turn process. So if, uh, so let's say in the, in the first term, we have some bias and uh, the system gets uh, some action based on the bias and then the user feedback. And then in the second turn, the second turn is based on the uh, bias of the first turn, right? So uh, as the turns uh, goes, uh, as the turns increase, then the bias would be would get would would be more and more severe. So how to study the bias and the bias problems in conversational recommendation system has not been touched yet, or has uh, or uh, to my best of knowledge, uh, only few paper has touched it. So. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is a problem uh, to consider for the future. Okay, the next problem is that the sophisticated strategies. For example, we have we do have introduced uh, some works uh, doing uh, try to try to propose strategies, but um, but the conversational strategy or conversation action is very very complex. You know, right? We have bargaining. Uh, we have uh, negotiation. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, conversational uh, action and strategy. So um, how can we use more diverse, more wise conversational strategy to achieve better uh, conversational recommendation results? For example, how to handle negative feedback, how to handle delayed feedback, how to design the reward function such that based on the feedback, how to handle sparse reward, all this has been preliminary touched, but um, yeah, we yeah yeah. There, there are a lot of room to improve. So to improve, so yeah. So the sophisticated strategy is a problem, and then the knowledge enrichment. So you know, so uh, in the human beings, for the human beings, we conduct uh, conversations, we conduct dialogues, uh, based on our rich world of knowledge. But uh, for conversation recommendation system. Can it leverage just rich knowledge to conduct uh, uh, diverse and knowledgeable uh, conversations? Further, is it possible to import visual sounds a lot of different uh, modality? Um, you you can say as a human beings, if 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 you if if a human if you talk to a salesman, a salesman. Does not only using his utterance to sell to sell product to you. Instead, uh, they use visual sound. A lot of the, they use a lot of modality to achieve successful recommendation. So, is it possible or how to important visual and modality and uh, different uh, a different modality to have a better uh, interaction to achieve success, successful recommend, recommendation is uh, also an issue. Okay, the last one is uh, the evaluation. So uh, as Chongming has, uh, has pointed out, the evaluation is very important. And um, the, the, the most promising way to evaluate a conversation recommendation is to build the user simulator. Because conversation is a dynamic process, it requires uh, humans or some agents to interact with um, uh, uh, the conversational recommendation agent. Uh, right. So otherwise, uh, uh, the, the, this is what the what the the uh, what the real uh, the the realistic scenario for conversational recommendation system. So so yeah, obviously it it, it is very hard. 
to ask human beings to interact with the conversation recommendation. So the only solution is to use is to build a simulator. But how to build a simulator? How to simulate um, two uh, user uh, feedback or two user actions is a long stand. Uh, will be a long stand topic. I personally I believe this the simulation building is one of the key bottleneck for the development of conversational recommendation. Okay, last. Yeah, we are, here we are discussing the promising future uh, direction for conversational recommendation system. But I want to see CRS itself is a promising future, right? It can solve the long-standing problems of information asymmetry and the dynamic user preference problems. So, yeah, I want to use this slide, which has been a uh, uh, that has been uh, explained, has been illustrated in the introduction part to conclude our survey. We think CRS itself is a promising future for conversational recommendation system because CRS is the promising direction for, for recommendation system. It solves the information asymmetry and dynamic preference problem. It provides opportunity to converge cutting edge techniques to put the development of, of, of recommendation. For example, it uh, integrates reinforced learning uh, for multi-tier interaction, it uh, integrates natural language processing uh, to get user feedback to have better understanding of the users. And uh, it um, integrates explainable AI, conversational AI, and the multimodal interactions, etc. cetera. All uh, conversational recommendation system provide an opportunity to converge all these techniques to push the development of recommendation uh, a recommendation system. All right, the last is that conversation system is an exemplary step towards the big goal of human machine symbiosis. Because uh, yeah, if we inject the conversation, the interact action to the recommendation system, the recommendation system can be friendly, can know the user better, and uh, can serve the user better like a personal assistant with the ability for conversation, for communication. The AI intelligence like a recommendation system can really yeah, live with human beings in a harmonious style. Okay, so that's all my conclusion. Okay. Thank you. Hello? Wen Chiang, yep. I hope yeah, you can hear yes. me now. So thank you very much for wrapping up. Uh, let's see if there are questions. Uh, I think there are some questions on the chat. No? Questions from the room? There's someone, and there's a question here in front. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, my question is for the third speaker uh, regarding the 3.4 challenge. Uh, about the knowledge enrichment, uh, we know like of course extra additional knowledges are available, for example, in terms of movie recommendations, uh, DBpedia and some other knowledge uh, enriched uh, data sets are available. But it was written like common sense knowledge. So I was interested to know what are the practical examples of common sense knowledge? Okay, uh, so the practical example, right? So, so let's say in a dialogue system, um, if a dialogue system uh, has uh, common sense knowledge, uh, it can uh, chat with the uh, users uh, more smoothly. Yeah, so, but uh, yeah, but uh, it's, it's very hard to identify yeah, what is common knowledge, right? So, but, but what I want to emphasize is that we need to inject the knowledge as possible as we can, such that we can have smooth conversation and high, have a more accurate recommendation to the users. 
Yeah, so if I can add to that, so if you remember from the, the segment about um, evaluation, uh, there are different aspects to evaluating recommender systems. One certainly is about the utility, right, to do, do, do recommend the systems. Uh, satisfy users um, or satisfy suppliers, the utility side. The other side is the um, how natural is the conversation, how engaging is it, um, how smooth is it. And uh, I think what Wang Chang just said was uh, f we certainly need for the second part uh, for systems to be a bit more clever about the world. Um, right, so that's, uh, so that's not maybe not necessarily for the utility, although I, I think it can probably benefit there as well, but mostly for that second part, that we need uh, systems to be more knowledgeable about the planet. I hope that helps. Uh, I think there was a question here. Thank you very much uh, for the interesting uh, tutorial. And uh, I would like to ask you whether, uh, how do you know that this additional communication uh, has a positive uh, impact on user experience at all. I mean, obviously it has positive impact on, on, on the system because system knows more information after asking the question, but there probably should be a cost for asking a person because uh, probably uh, people don't like to be asked, like, uh, what, if, or what if these questions are annoying, if, if they, even if they are intelligent? Yeah, uh, so uh, did you get the question, Wen Jiang? So uh, maybe, oh, yes. okay, you want to respond to that? Maybe you can have a go first and I can maybe add something. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think this is a good, uh, I think this is a good question. So uh, interaction, yeah, I, I do agree that interaction might not always be helpful. Yeah, sometimes user does not want to be interrupted. So, uh, but I think, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not saying conversational recommendation will replace uh, traditional recommendation system, uh, but uh, provide another choice, another solution for the recommendation. Yeah, if or for the case that uh, the user does not want to be uh, interrupted, we just uh, do not use a conversation uh, scenario. Uh, you do not use a conversation function, right? So we, we can let the user choose, right? Actually asking whether the user wants the interaction itself is a conversation, right? Okay, that's all, that, that's my uh, answer. Yeah, and uh, so it's, um, there is ongoing work more in the, uh, in the dialogue system space on, uh, for instance, trying to predict how engaging uh, an agent should be. And if you pick up signals, and uh, often it's hard to pick up those signals from text alone, it's easier to pick up those signals from uh, voice you pick up signals that uh, this user is impatient or has had enough, you know, make it as efficient as possible. Go get, get the, the user to the required end state as quickly as possible. And so that's easier if you have more modalities. It's harder with just uh, sort of typical text boxes. Um, and it's probably also, it's certainly some, not something we're very good at yet. And it's probably also something that uh, will be, uh, of course, will be user dependent, but will probably also be domain dependent. Uh, so if it's a, if you have a simple mundane job to do, well, just get it done. If it's maybe a bit more risky uh, for a user uh, and if the stakes are somewhat higher, then maybe go a bit slower. It also gives more opportunity perhaps for reflection as the, as the interaction um, evolves. Uh, but it's a great question not a solved problem at all. Thanks. I think we have, oh, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the very interesting tutorial. Um, so do you think, um, don't you think that <laughs> Uh, online evaluation with uh, real users uh, is necessary at least in the um, earliest stages because how, how you can uh, be sure that the simulated user is uh, close to the real users? Yeah, uh, so your, your simulator, so the question was, shouldn't you do online evaluation early? 
to make sure that your simulator is at least somewhat informed about what, net, what realistic behavior is. Uh, yeah, yeah, in, in early stages, at least um, some um, evaluation with real users, isn't it necessary? Sure, I mean, you, you need to inform your, uh, your simulator. Uh, but you can do that in different ways. You can uh, do that in a, in a very controlled environment, right? And then uh, to, to set certain parameters about uh, patients or, or about um, the degree for engagingness, etc. cetera. Um, you, we're not done yet, certainly, with developing the methodology for good uh, simulators. Um, Certainly not in, the, in this setting. Um, they'll need to uh, be aware of subtleties. They'll, not, they'll also need to be aware of uh, dynamic preferences, dynamic uh, sort of long term, and that so it could be a sort of a trend. Uh, so that's another point for, for world knowledge. You need to be aware of trends, uh, but also dynamics of, of an ongoing conversation. Uh, how fast does this go? How, what, what would happen if all of a sudden a user changes their mind? Does this happen? How often does it happen? What, what are sensible uh, strategies for responding? Uh, yeah, uh, I think it's a great space to, uh, for, especially for early stage researchers, to, to jump on and, uh, and, uh, because we have so many questions there. I think there was another question. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I have a question regarding those NLP part. Uh, there was a lot of LSTMs in the in the slides. Are there any work uh, with uh, recent NLP models like transformers, like BART for uh, understanding and GPT for generation? Yeah. So the question was: instead of LSTMs, um, where are the transformers? Um, yes. So there. Uh, heaps and heaps of transformers in, uh, in very recent uh, approaches to this problem. Like, like everywhere else, uh, transformers uh, are also being uh, used a lot in this space. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, I think we have a, a few transformer papers cited in the survey, uh, but of course that's, it's a super active area and I'm sure we, we were missing some. Uh, and we will miss even more uh, if we look again in a few months. Okay, thank you. And both for the f uh, for ranking problems, of course, that has shifted quite radically to uh, in, a, in a in a conversational setting to um, uh, transformers, but also for for uh, generative aspects of the tasks, uh, lots of transformers. Yeah. I think I hear someone saying it's time for lunch. Um, so thank you all for being here. Uh, please uh, feel... <laughs> feel free to reach out uh, uh, to, to any of the three of us. Uh, and we'd love to get any feedback, uh, both on the slides, uh, but also on the survey. Uh, surveys usually have a very short expiry date uh, and especially in this space things move fast so if, if we're missing things or missing developments please let us know and we'll, we'll do an update that's the, the beauty of archive we can always update so all the best thank you